And then Buddy Cop to Jimmy Smith comes over and he's like, I get it. You're looking for that lady's kid because you want to fuck her. And Jimmy Smith is like, what? And he's like, I'm a police officer, you stupid why, asshole. Why else would you try and find a lady's lost kid? I don't understand. <laughs> 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 You're so right. Have you never fucked the lady whose kid you found? They are. Oh, it's so great. It's a great night. <laughs> let me tell you. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because it, it makes regular movies good, even if they suck. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath's going to be unable to join us today. He's busy moving his three possessions, but sitting 900 <laughs> miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Fantastic, No, It's been more than a month of torturing Cara Santa Maria, and I've come back in style. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, right, right. Yeah, it's, just, it's been longer since we've seen her than since the audience has. And, of course, <laughs> as we've just teased, also joining us today is somehow still returning guest masochist of talk nerdy fame, Cara Santa Maria. Cara, welcome back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I missed your dejected sigh. So, <laughs> so tell us, Cara, what will we be breaking down today? Okay, so this is the story of a little girl who is chosen, or I don't know, maybe she's Jesus, or the ringleader of a monkey bat slash rat army. I'm still a little <laughs> unclear on the details, but yeah. Anyway, this movie is called Bless the Child. It's on HBO because they probably got it as one of those like freebie package deals with Dune, like when they put those shitty U2 songs on your new iPod and you couldn't take them off. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved the satanic panic, but it was all too reasonable and evidence based for your taste, yeah. you will love Bless the Child. It's law and order. I think it's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So our one week tacular here is a movie that managed to get the coveted 3% on Rotten Tomatoes. Which is a great reminder, you can completely ignore at least 3% of movie reviewers. <laughs> right, because they're not averaging. It's not like they got an average of 0.15 stars. That means three out of every 100 reviewers were like, yeah, no, they, they nailed it. <laughs> I like that. So, more spinning. <laughs> I can't get enough spinning. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best or being the worst at? Yeah, so I nominate this for being the best worst cop because it's like this was Jimmy Smith's audition tape for NYPD Blue and they felt so bad for him that they gave him the job anyway. <laughs> Literally, he's like constantly one step behind and his most reliable detective tool is his Bible. Yeah. He does it's that kind of movie. <laughs> so and we've already alluded to mine. I was going to go with best worst superpower. The little girl in this movie, she has pyrokinesis, which is useful. She doesn't find any uses for it but her other her main power that we really focus on is the power of spinning yep <laughs> right or is or she has telekinesis and she only uses it for spinning either way second lamest avenger after hawkeye okay yep yep <laughs> mm -hmm. i was gonna go with best worst days ex machina so it doesn't happen till the very end but by the time god shows up to lend a hand against this satanic cult He's not the guy who wants to fight you in a Denny's parking lot. He's not the guy holding back the guy who wants to fight you in a Denny's parking lot. He's the guy standing menacingly behind the guy holding the guy back <laughs> who wants to fight you in the Denny's parking lot. Yeah, he really half-asses his contribution at the end, right? So, and it's like that waking up that day and realizing it's due of miracles. Okay. <laughs> oh, was that uh, They needed that miracle. It was the day before Easter. Fuck. <laughs> Group project of miracles. Yeah. <laughs> God sitting in the back. Whatever, my parents are getting divorced right now. Okay. <laughs> okay, God. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have to work hard to make Christian movie work here. So we're going to take a minute to stretch, but we'll be back in a flash with the string of overripe tropes that is Bless the Child. Kara. Jesus, Eli, what are you doing in my closet? Not important. Hey, I've been feeling a little like Ugh, lately, and I don't know if you're allowed to, but can you tell me the special famous person exercise you do to get like, you know, ripped? Is it hot Pilates? I feel like it might be hot Pilates. Blink if it's hot Pilates. <laughs> Eli, there's no secret to fitness, but if you want to feel stronger and healthier, why not try FitBod? What's FitBod? 
FitBod's an app that creates a fitness program that continually adapts with new exercises and dynamic intensity that adjusts to how you're progressing. So you'll be challenged to meet your goals at your own pace. Hmm, that sounds good. But is it like super hard? Do I have to do bruppies? I don't want to do any bruppies. Okay, so they're called burpees. And that's the great thing about FitBod. FitBod creates a fitness program that continually adapts to you. So you stay challenged with new exercises, pacing, and intensity based on where you are and where you want to be. Plus the app's filled with body positive language about fitness and health instead of losing weight or getting ripped. Ooh, okay. That does sound good. But is it super expensive? Nobody's bought any of your hats that I put on eBay yet. Nobody's on what now? Never mind. How much does it cost the FitBot app? The app. FitBot's only nine ninety nine a month or fifty nine ninety nine a year. But if you sign up now, you'll get twenty five percent off your membership. Okay, Kara, I'm convinced. Where do I sign up? Pick up the pace on your fitness journey with FitBot today, and your future self will thank you. Get twenty five percent off your membership at fitbot.me slash gam. That's twenty five percent off at fitbot.me slash g a m. Nice. All right. See you later, Kara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. See you later. Um. Hello? Kamel. Yeah, he knows about the hot Pilates. No, n- no, no, no. It's okay. I'll handle this myself. <laughs> Kara! Kara! Hey, movie studio writer guys. We are so glad to have you back. Yeah, we could really use your help with this one. Yeah, well, someone took a bunch of credit cards out in my name and bought a race car bed for a Christian YouTuber. So I'm here. How can I help? Okay, so we're working on this paranormal thriller called Bless the Child. Yeah, it's about a little girl with angel powers who gets kidnapped by a satanic cult. That sounds really bad. Oh, it is. But see, in the movie, the little girl has autism, and and we want to make sure that we're being properly sensitive about that. Yeah. I mean, you could just not use people on the autism spectrum as props for special skills or powers in movies. Oh, not that sensitive. We don't want to be that sensitive. Sure, fine. Okay, let me hear it. Okay, so so this is the scene where where Cody uh, meets her mom for the first time. Gr- Greg, you wanna you wanna read this with me? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll be Cody. Okay. Hi, Cody. I'm your mom. Duh, no likey, mommy. Duh. And scene. So, what do you think? What'd you think of that? <laughs> um. Wow, that was really offensive and terrible. Because there weren't enough does, right? I'm going to go. There's got to be a better way to earn money than this. I told you we needed more does. Oh, yeah, yeah, I stand corrected. Put in more does. I will put in more does. And we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to start off with an opening that wouldn't be more generic if it was just a white screen that said horror movie credits written in like block letters. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's just it's like the font is cheesy. The music is cheesy. The, we're panning over a statue and can't quite tell what it is. Is cheesy. I like that sometimes horror movie music accidentally slips into klezmer because they just know minor key is scary. I wrote my notes, a ghost fiddler on the roof. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds crazy, no. Yeah, so we're panning over this stage. Right right as I'm like, okay, is this Han frozen in carbonite? They eventually back off enough for us to see that it's a gargoyle. Yeah, my note, I wrote down, can I pay extra on many vids to see the statue's face? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you notice that in the font that they picked, all of the little T's were crosses? Right. Yeah. And there's little dots. Yeah. Oh, it's just, oh. yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, they really got their goddamn money's worth out of creepy statue knuckles, though. We watched that for about three minutes. <laughs> and then we get the New York City skyline. Now, I, I should point out, this movie, it takes place in New York City, but it was filmed in Ontario, I guess. Or, but it, it was not filmed in New York City in a way that's going to bother anyone who lived in New York for any amount of time throughout <laughs> the whole goddamn movie. That makes sense now. Something felt very off to me. <laughs> they will constantly show you like a New York City icon and then there'll be like a six mile long park that is not Central Park. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Or some like Canadian only drugstore chain in the background or so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they didn't try very hard. But anyway, so we catch up with Kim Basinger on the, on a bus. And some lady's like, hey, did you hear about that miraculous star that's going to be central to the plot eventually? Right. Mm -hmm. So this is clearly the first indication that we are not in New York because I've never had such a friendly, overly familiar conversation on a New York City bus. No, I have. But those are always it's always with people who like they just clearly were pushed out of a hospital because they ran out of money. 
Right, exactly. They've got an IV trailing behind them. And they're like, hey, man, did you enjoy Dune? By the way, unlike Kim Basinger later when she's in the freaking hospital yep. with oh. no IV. Oh, my God. We're going to do the whole Basinger, Basinger thing with like the gift gif thing, aren't we? Oh, That's is it Basinger? I don't it's, know. It's Basinger. But yeah. Basinger. It's also GIF, but who the hell? Are, wait, are you pronounce- sure it's Basinger? Yeah, I'm. I'm also sure it's gift, but you know, it's, it's, I guess it's up to everybody's interpretation. Then I question your veracity. <laughs> I always thought it was Basinger. I'm going to go with Bass Singer throughout, just to balance <laughs> it no, out. That's, that's right. It's Bass Singer. It's, I'm just going to call her Kimmy B if you guys okay, can right, Kimmy, Kimmy B we can work with. So yeah. uh, we can also use her character's name, but I honestly don't even fucking remember it. I just have no, a guy. It's something like Merm or like Meow or Marm. <laughs> well, the kid, the kid calls her Mim. Yeah, yeah. I was, I wasn't sure what was happening with that. Her name is Kim. Maybe that's, I don't know. Yeah. Meow. But the lady's like, yeah, there's a miraculous Christmas star and it's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And Kim's like, she's like, you're full of shit, but I'm saying this politely. Yeah. Right. That is what happened. But I will say it is a universally New York experience for someone to be like, Hey, quick small talk. And you're like, Oh yeah, quick small talk. And then they're like, Jesus. And you're like, sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No. That's on me for not responding to what time is it with fuck you. That's, That's on me. Yep. That's very New York. I blame myself. So. I stand corrected, Eli. You've been <laughs> to New York New before. York. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, okay. So then we take a look at the star. We pan down to her apartment. She, I think, lives in Eli's old place when he was still in Manhattan. And yep. she, she gets in there and there's this coughing person in the in the stairwell who we at first think is just some rando homeless person, but turns out to be her drug-addled sister. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I talk about this later in my notes, but... Ah, the 90s when all drug addicts were healthy, well-fed white women with salon haircuts who <laughs> coughed and wore stockings to indicate their drug use. <laughs> yeah, so but she's she's all drugged up and she has a baby now. The baby is nine days old and she's showing up at her sister's apartment who she hasn't seen in years, I guess. And hey. Credit to Jenna. She is holding up really well for someone who gave birth nine fucking days ago. <laughs> right. Who's doing squat thrusts on the living room floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she weighs about 90 pounds. Right. Yeah. yeah. And this is the first kind of clue, cue that the baby is off. Because she literally says to her sister, oh, she doesn't like to be held. What the fuck? Nine day old baby doesn't yeah. like to be held. Right. And how did <laughs> you determine that? What do you have? Exactly. Yes. Well, she's <laughs> crying all that. She's a fucking baby. <laughs> she's, she's a week and a day old lady. They don't like much at nine days old. <laughs> or they like everything. It's kind of hard to tell the difference. Right. We also milk shame mom right away, which I think is pretty fantastic, right? Your sister shows up. She's a drug addict who gave up, who's here to drop off her baby. She gave birth nine days ago, and it's like, ooh, breast is bad. I know, right? <laughs> She's literally got a needle hanging out of her arm. Right, like, yes, exactly. <laughs> not, not a good idea. So, so they're fighting, whatever. She's like, I'm a cunt. I can't take care of my baby. And the sister's like, fuck you. And then she slaps her. And every time I see people People slap people in movies. I'm always like, does this happen in real life? I've never seen someone slap right? another person mid argument. Have you? Well, it would also be a lot more serious if it wasn't a fucking Tom and Jerry slap where she, <laughs> they both spin around like children's tops for four minutes afterwards. <laughs> Well, I just love the exposition as insult that we get in this fight, right? Like where the sister's like, oh, yeah, well, you're infertile and your husband left you because of that, you know? Oh, yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah. So I, I actually I laid a chip down right there on miraculous pregnancy by the end for Kim Basinger's character. And I didn't that it did not pay off. I was shocked. Mm-mm. So, yes, but the sister's like, hey, I've got to I've got to go and, and abandon my baby with you. And, and Kim's like, no, don't. Don't leave. Listen to the background music. The, the, it's rising strings. There's an emotional reconciliation happening. <laughs> she, she might as well do a what's that over there run away from the baby. She, she goes, I'm going to go take a bath. And she's like picking up her clothes in her bag. And Kimmy B is like, oh, do you need your clothes and bang? She's like, okay, go into the bath. Bye. And then her wheel, her legs do like that wheel shape. And yeah, she's exactly. on her way out the door. <laughs> <laughs> that drum roll starts in yeah, the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, right. Right. But yeah, so but she runs away and leaves the baby. So Kim Basinger has to be the mom now, right? 
So can you guys tell me why every Halloween scary movie has to also be a Christmas movie? Like, what is this trope? I don't get it. Yeah, it's a weird thing that like at some point in a movie planning process, someone always goes like, this isn't really good. We should add another holiday. We need to add (laughs) another holiday. Well, so the reason, though, is because we're going to parallel eventually this kid with Jesus. So she has to be born around Christmas time. Right. Yeah. But then why do they keep calling it Easter? Yeah. Well, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Right. Right. Why do we have a Halloween movie that starts in at at Christmas and ends in Easter? Right. Exactly. That's a great fucking question. (laughs) Where the hell is Thanksgiving in this equation? Also, they keep referencing Easter. But if you notice, there are no Easter visual cues in the entire film. It's autumn. It's autumn. (laughs) It's like it's like snowing. Like, so, well, right. it's, it's very clearly autumn in a lot of these shots. <laughs> when they're walking by the park, the leaves have changed. I'm like, that's weird Easter behavior. Right there. It's because of the Satan magic. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> it's because it's in fucking Canada. That's right. Why. Yeah, exactly. So okay, so then we get a quick montage of of Kim being the surrogate mommy for, and and we also get a montage of them learning that she has that she's on the spectrum right yeah now Kara as a person with training in this Mm -hmm. this is a great depiction of autistic people right like there's a really sensitive thoughtful way not only is it sensitive it's totally textbook especially (laughs) the part where they're describing what autism is oh my God. <laughs> the doctor might as well go, you know, she's like a meh and bang his hand against his chest. <laughs> yeah, <it's> so <laughs> Do the bad. rolling finger next to his head or whatever. Yeah. 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 So, but like I, I wrote my notes. I'm like, oh my God, it's in 2000, we were still doing autistic people have the devil in them movies. Yeah, clearly. And then Kim is telling the doctor, she's like, well, you know, I don't think she's autistic. She knows love. <laughs> what? <laughs> so disgusting. This whole conversation is just, it's like they're trying to pick a fight with the autistic person in the audience. <laughs> oh, she can give hugs and she's not like, like she's never done this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. And you notice that they made Kimmy be a psychiatric nurse for literally no reason. Yep. Yeah. It's no reason. There's one scene where she psychiatric nurses very poorly, I might add. Yeah. And it's like, and she clearly knows nothing about psychiatric syndromes. So I just, I'm not sure I understand that plot point. Well, they didn't want yeah. to have to look anything up. We'll get to that when we go, <laughs> when we get to our 16th century druids later. <laughs> fucking movie. Okay. So, but we also reinforce here that Kim is not a big fan of religion, right? Cause, they, cause he's like, Hey, I know a great school for kids with special needs. It's a Catholic school. And she's like, ah, I don't really like religion. And he's like, that's, should be the least of your fucking concerns. It's a Catholic school. <laughs> well, that's what's so amazing is that what the movie is going for is you don't have a problem that they're Catholic because you're an atheist. But what I watched was no, they, but they won't fuck her. I know what you're thinking. They're going to fuck her, but they, they won't. I mean, technically it's the early 2000s, so they are absolutely going to, but no, they won't fuck her. They might though. But also, even even before that, once again, she is a psychiatric nurse talking to a psychiatrist. And he literally says, well, the only place for an autistic kid is that Catholic special needs school way out there in Brooklyn. Like, what? It's New York fucking city. (laughs) There's like 63,000 schools in that city. (laughs) It makes no sense. No Uh. sense. So and then we have to we I guess this scene is there so that we know that like she prioritizes the kid over her personal life. We get this scene where this boyfriend we will never see again is watching Duck Soup with her. Yeah, I kind of wanted to stop and watch Duck Soup, to be honest with you. That was a really good scene. Cody's bonking in the other room. Yeah, that's the thing. We're supposed to think she's this amazing mom, but she's basically like hooking up with her boyfriend while they're watching Duck Soup. And the girl is like four feet away in the hallway, just hitting her head against the wall. Right. Yeah. Like maybe if you included your kid more. (laughs) And the way she gets her to stop is she goes, honey, honey, take a deep breath. And I was like, yeah, that's what kids who are in the middle of the clinch need. A fucking deep breath. Give her a stress ball, too. She'll stop being autistic entirely. (laughs) (laughs) No, but she actually it actually is quite a good intervention for this kid. Okay. Yeah. No, it works for him. (laughs) She does a pretty good job with the kid. The kid's like, you know, clearly gone through this before. But when the guy leaves, it's so fantastic. He's like, hello, I am not leaving forever. You will absolutely (laughs) see me again for sure. I'll call you from the phone book. 
<laughs> right, yeah. His legs make the little thing. He runs yeah. through the same <laughs> hole that the sister made on Christmas. <laughs> All right, so then we cut to three years later at her special needs school. She's spinning a plate, not like you're thinking, though. It's side, It's hard to explain. It's like sideways, like a coin spinning, but she's got a finger on it, like a, like a Harlem globe. Like a top. Upside down. <laughs> but she is spinning the fuck out of that plate, though. This is going to turn out to be magical later, but at first I was just impressed, right? Yeah. This is where Cody won over my heart because the nun comes over and she's like, Cody, it is a time for a whatever. And Cody's like, fuck off. And she's like, okay. Baby, yes, I will fuck. Yes, you're going to Don't spin out a plate then. <laughs> is she Italian? Is that what was happening? I couldn't place it. The nuns are alternatingly Hispanic or Italian. They don't just say it's a scene to scene thing. I think they flipped a coin. I thought it was like Eastern European. I wasn't sure what they were going for. It's got a communist accent is what we call that. Yeah, on show. That's what I, yeah, yeah, it was definitely communist accent. Yeah. yeah. All right. So and, and then we get the scene where this. OK, this guy to me is exactly midway between Kevin Spacey and Jeremy Renner. The bald Ooh. kidnapper guy. Right. OK, you just. Yeah. So there's a bald kidnapper guy. Yeah. Would, bald kidnapper yeah. guy is baldly kidnapping a kid. Trying to. Yeah. He uses too many child kidnapping techniques in too short a time. <laughs> He's like, hi, Martin. I'm a friend of your father's. I have a puppy. Help me. I'm in stuck. my windowless like, <laughs> band. Yeah. Exactly. Would you like some candy? <laughs> Just one, man. I wanted him to get back in the car and his friend is like, you're using all the ones I gave you. Just one of them. One of them. I have a puppy or I know your father. What was even the point of having a box with a stick under it? He was already in the van. We already had him. In the van, man. But he does have an actual puppy as bait that they show. Right. Like they actually rented a puppy for the scene and it was a cute puppy. So I'm pretty sure I would fall for that shit every time. <laughs> <laughs> every time. There's the scene we missed is where the satanic cult is like, all right, I'm going to the puppy store. Do we have a preference for the kind of bait puppy? We're going to need to we'll still have this dog after Easter. I'm just putting this out. <laughs> It's not always going to be a little puppy, you know. You have to walk him. You have to walk yes. him. You have to feed him. <laughs> Satan's not going to do that for us, okay? <laughs> yeah, but the kid climbs into the van and gets kidnapped. Oh, by the guy with the tattoo. The tattoo is very important because we're only going to see it nine fucking thousand oh, more times. On everything. It might as well just be the word clue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like my friend, I have a really good friend who has a tattoo on his left leg and it's like, you know, a little Chinese character and people always say like, what does it mean? And he's like, it means left leg. He got left leg. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. Left Fantastic. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. So we cut to Kim and Cody walking home that night and she sees like, I don't know, Satan shadows or something and gets spooked. Yeah, what was that? Yeah, I, I, she gets freaked out by like a pile of New York City garbage. And I wrote in my notes, I get it, Cody, but you get used to it. You're in the city for a few years and you're like, oh, yeah, a big pile of garbage and some rats. <laughs> nah, I still have the same reaction every time. Yeah. And then there's and then there is there are rats. And the mom legit says or the mom that's confusing. Kimmy B. Kimmy B says it's just little mice like Minnie Mouse. Yeah, that's great parenting. Yeah, right. No, don't worry about the sewer rats in New York. I'm sure they'll let you pet them. Yeah, we'll just make an association with a beloved Disney character. Yes. Sure. It's cool. So they go upstairs. She's spinning her little car in the same way that she was spinning the plate. The news is in the background going, hey, that kid from the last scene got murdered, by the way. He's dead. He's dead. Right, right. And, but mom takes away her spinning her car, like, judgingly. Like, why, why doesn't anybody want her to spin her toys? <laughs> right? She seems to be enjoying it. Honey, better superpowers. What did we say about having lame superpowers? Yeah, right? <laughs> You want to end up a Morlock? This is how you end up a Morlock, kid. Come on. Notice I'm not laughing because I don't understand that reference at all. I That's fine. So, <laughs> I'll laugh enough for both of us, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, but, but this is also where we see that she can spin the car even just using her mind. But mom doesn't notice. Oh, we saw that? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. She does that for just yeah, a second. Yeah, she lets go for a second. <laughs> yeah. And then just then... Maria, the babysitter, shows up. Now, I absolutely fucking hate Maria. Oh, she's awful. Look, so Kim Basinger's character is an atheist. Or at the very least, she's a nun. She's non-religious. And this babysitter is, as soon as she leaves, indoctrinating her kid with Christian bullshit. This babysitter 
is a sleeper agent to assure that this movie made it onto god awful movies. <laughs> like, and she didn't rise up every time she was in a scene to be like, no, Jesus will bring your mother back. Trust me. Yeah. This movie might not have made it onto our show, but luckily, the first thing we see her say to this child is, if you pray to Jesus, your real mom will come back. Yeah. Oh, it's so gross. Like, did they not do a background check on her? That's such a garbage thing to say to a little kid. Right? <laughs> Especially, again, a kid who doesn't share your... It would be bad even if the family was Christian, right? Because no, the fuck, that doesn't... It's not how shit works. But for a fucking non-religious family, that's just awful. <laughs> I want to see that background check going on. Okay, and uh, so are you like uh -uh, Christian? Oh, you are. All right, good, good, good. <laughs> just putting some red X's in some boxes here, Maria. So Don't worry about it. <laughs> But yeah, so she leaves and then the little kid, just in case you didn't notice her telekinetically spinning the car, she telekinetically kicks up a storm in her snow globe here as well. So that it, it, they're like, you know, she can spin a number of different items. <laughs> Kimmy B kicks open the door. What the fuck is that? That's an even worse superpower. That's literally a thing <laughs> spinning inside a thing. <laughs> All right, so it's the next day. Rufus Sewell is on TV being interviewed about his sweet new cult. He's, I guess, a former child star turned cult leader. Who is this actor again? He always freaks me out. He's uh, Rufus Sewell. He was in Dark City. If you liked sci-fi, you would know that one. But um, I feel like he's just one of the, he's like a character actor that's been in everything. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's in a lot of stuff. Yeah. He was part of this perfect golden era of television where like people just wandered up to disabled actors and they were like, oh, we could put you in the horror movie. And he was like, I guess so. I wish you would just stop. He's disabled? Yeah, he's got a, a pretty serious walleye. Oh. oh I don't know. Yeah, he does have like the, yeah, that's. Oh, you're yeah, right. No, he does. Yeah. yeah. That he is the guy with the weird eye all throughout the 2000s. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're though, right and that's yeah. absolutely what he is in this movie is the guy with the weird eye. Although this, no, this movie has a kid with an even weirder eye. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> they too. lean all the way into weird eye in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Flash cut to Rufus Sewell taking that kid through a training montage. All right, kid. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to make it in villain movie business because of your disability, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so we learned that his he runs a self-help group that's helping drugged up kids. And there's some suspicions that maybe it's not on the up and up. But as that's on TV, Kim Basinger hears something creepy in the back. And we do this, what I call a jump nothing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because it all like it kicks around like there's going to be a pop scare any second. And then nothing happens at all. Mm -hmm. I, the pop scare is that the blinds open. Right, and there's a, I love and there's the a gar th that same damn gargoyle outside. Is not it doing immediately anything. across the window from her daughter's bedroom. <laughs> That's so creepy and fucked up. Yeah, I like it. I wrote my notes. Gargoyle's like, "Hey, how's it going? What's under the rope?" Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I also love like she just noticed that for the first time. Like she acts like that gargoyle just showed up. Yeah. Also. I know there's already so much ableism in this movie, but I love the set designers not giving a fuck. And they were like, well, she has autism. So all her crayon drawings would just be random fucking squiggles. Oh, I didn't <laughs> notice that. Yeah, the room is full of like childhood drawings. And then it's got Cody's and it's just like, meh, meh, meh. Oh, See, I still wasn't sure who she was or what role she was meant to play. So I thought, because they were like, you know, they're like the spiral drawings that every like disturbed child yes, uh, makes yeah, in of every course. movie where the disturbed child has to go to the psychologist. They make the spiral drawings. I thought that's what they were going for. Like, ooh, is she the devil? I don't know. Yeah, she does oh, draw a spiral. Still trying to figure it out. Yeah, no, I didn't notice them, but yeah, that's, that sounds about right. And then we we cut to, we have to meet Jimmy Smith. So we cut to them pulling the puppy kid out of the river, pulling his body out of the river. And it's a totally different movie now. All of a sudden, we're literally just like watching CSI. Yeah. yeah. Like the movie changes into an episode of NYPD Blue or whatever the fuck. They're all the same. It's like they found a reel from NYPD Blue on the yeah. floor of the editing room. And they were like, wait a minute. Score. <laughs> we could have 90 minutes in this movie. <laughs> also, I just have to talk about this because, again, you could not do this today. Jimmy Smith's come over and he goes, I'm looking for Detective Bugatti. I wrote, oh, I'm sorry. It was Detective something something Italian taken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for Detective Salami. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I love the moment, too, where so he's with the FBI, Jimmy Smith is, and he comes up to the New York City detective and the New York City detective is like, hey, man, keep a low profile. This is a movie. So there's going to be a, a bunch of jurisdiction nonsense. Everybody's going to hate you for 
reasons that don't make any real sense if you think about it. Except to be fair, that's literally never going to happen. So I'm going to reference it right now, and that will never be a plot point again in this movie. That's true. It's almost like they're like, look, we're contractually obligated to at least reference this if there's a cop in a movie, but... um, Uh, don't step on any toes and don't try to vaccinate any of these guys, okay? It's the NYPDB. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, okay, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to still investigate the murder. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 no, still investigate the murder. It's like, okay, let me go do that. And then, of course, he shows up and there's a weird Satan symbol burned into the kid's arm or carved into it. I couldn't really tell what they were Yeah, it's for. the same shit. It's like yes. a pitchfork. Yes, it's a pitchfork with all of the tines leaning left because, you know, those damn Democrats and they're Satan. <laughs> really? Is that what it is? No, no, it's because Satan is left handed. It's because. No, but is it actually leaning left? Yes. Yeah. yeah all the tines I didn't point notice left. that because it's yeah. sinister. Right. Exactly. Ooh. Exactly. Yeah. So meanwhile, back at Cody's school, Sister Don't Spin the Plate shows up to comment on on Cody's drawings. And she's like, wow, those are some um, satanic symbols you're drawing right there. <laughs> she walks over and I was, I wanted her so badly to be like, Cody, you remember when you talk a bunch of shit to me yesterday? And I, <laughs> I just thought of a perfect thought thing of to say. <laughs> comebacks and I'm ready to give them to you. <laughs> Show you a little plate spinner. <laughs> Raggedy Asperger's, that's what I call you. Oh, Raggedy Jesus. Asperger's, huh? Is that good? Because you're red hair and you're on the spectrum. Oh, Nailing wow. Yeah, she's um and they they don't present Cody like they pretend I don't get what they're trying to make her out to be at the beginning. Like she's on the spectrum, but she's evil. But every time we see her, she's just like incredibly polite. Do you notice that? Well, so the thing is is that they give you all of the tropes of devil child, but she's supposed to be like the second coming of Jesus or yes. something by the end of it. Spoiler. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everything comes pre-spoiled on this one. But yeah, it's, so I, but it, it's real hard to pick up what the hell they're laying down. Because she's, again, she said they're drawing satanic symbols when the nun shows up. Right. And the nun looks at them knowingly. Right. Like, I love this trope, how it's like, she understands Cody's drawing immediately, the ripped up drawing of the devil pitchfork leaning to the left, because that's how Catholicism works. Right. No, right. they all know their symbology. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, OK. So and, and just then as she's commenting on the drawings, a bird like commits suicide at the window. He can't he can't take it any longer. So he flies into the window and dies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then we cut to Kim Basinger showing up to, to pick her up and, and all the kids are gathered around the dead bird in the yard. And a nun says, yeah, they're all gathered around a dead bird. Apparently, we haven't bothered to move the goddamn disease vector from the playground, <laughs> despite the fact that we clearly all know it's there. I feel like one of the rules of preschool should be don't let your child touch a dying bird. Like, now I have to yep. ask that when we interview. <laughs> <laughs> and Kim has the weirdest question. She says, do they know about death? And the nun says, yeah. I blame the Lion King. And I wrote in my notes, you sure it's not your weird cult that hangs dead guys on all the walls and all the classrooms? <laughs> Do you think they understand that? You're asking a nun. You're asking somebody who doesn't understand death professionally, lady. What the hell? <laughs> also, okay, so so Cody at this point is, is fucking, she's, rocking back and forth with a dead bird in her hand and I'm like hey maybe we don't make the Satan magic look like Jewish prayer huh no okay. <laughs> alright I will be fucking myself this is before I realized of course that she was the Jesus character so obviously yeah, she would be light, not the dark yeah so she's like reanimating the bird right yes exactly like, okay, it comes the bird back, comes to, back life. to life flies away and then seemingly nobody is confused by this. Everybody right. Like, nope. That was weird. And then they just move on. All the kids are like, hey, Cody, fix that bird. And everybody's like, oh, I guess the bird was fine all along. It's like, well, why would, how would it have been fine? <laughs> but, and this is important, Spacey Renner, the bald kidnapper guy, saw her miraculous bird resurrection from his windowless kidnapping van. He's like, ooh. Is that important though, really? <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> no, no, nothing this movie matters. is a good sign. <laughs> is important. So, okay. So then we, we cut to uh, Kim at work at the hospital. This is the, the one moment where her being a nurse will ever be relevant, right? Sort of. Oh, and I mean, again, Kara, I know that you've actually done some work in hospitals in like a psychological care mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. Nurses usually call people paranoid schizes, right? Is that like <laughs> a, a, Every time, yeah. <laughs> common it's well and they also usually say things like must be a full moon because oh, all the wackos are out yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah because science 
Right. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go put people in this old timey straight jacket <laughs> for being on their period. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does sketching actually mean coming down off of a high? I do not believe no. that it does. I she, think they no. just made that word up. She literally. So we see Christina Ricci and she's like, what's up with you? And she's like, I'm sketching. And then one second later, it means I'm coming down off of a high. I'm like, okay, none of that was necessary. Well, then why would you have used that word if you knew? Also, why would they be detoxing her in a psych ward? Makes no sense. Right. She's clearly not mentally ill at all. Nope. Because you got to be crazy to live in New York City. Right? Like she's, <laughs> she's, she's got capacity. She's like lucid. She's, she's not even, doesn't even look like she's coming down. She just informs them that she's coming down. I also, I have to point out, there's a moment where she's giving her an injection, you know, like you do when someone's coming down from heroin <laughs> and she's, they, they have attempted track marks and apparently this girl was just like stabbing in the general arm region <laughs> like a pin cushion. Yeah. yeah. Just wherever, wherever I'll be fine, I'm sure. No, she has craters in her arm like the surface of the moon. That's like literally <laughs> what her arm looks like. It's not, not realistic. Crazy billionaire remake of this movie. There's just 25 minutes where she's trying to find a vein. Oh, I'm so I got to call the RN. She's the only lady who can do this. <laughs> So now while this is all happening, of course, they're having a conversation where she's like, yeah, you know, I'm part of a satanic cult and they wanted to kill me when I tried to leave. So they overdosed me. And oh, by the way, your sister's in it. Right. But even before she says that, to be clear, she goes, they don't like people quitting their club. And the nurse practitioner's response, the psychiatric nurse practitioner says to her, nice club. Not, would you like to tell me more about this club? I would like to take a detailed history and understand if you are safe. Because that's my job, because I'm a psychiatric right. nurse. She literally just, nice club. She could not be more bored. Yeah, she couldn't care. Oh, yeah, so they tried to murder you, huh, with heroin? Anyway, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gotta get this. I really gotta get these samples upstairs. So, uh... Yeah, yeah. And then and then Christina Ricci's character is like, and I have a friend named Jenna. And she goes, duh, Jenna? My sister's <laughs> name is Jenna. Right. It must be the same person, like in New York City. Yes. How many Jennas could there possibly be? And somehow Christina Ricci <laughs> knows this. And she's like, did I say Jenna? I meant Janet. My friend's Janet. This isn't your sister. Gotta go. Gwingen. <laughs> like, it's the worst scene ever. Right. Before her little wheel legs start, she says, oh, and by the way, the whole, this is important. The whole plot is basically that they're after Cody now. They're after the kid. And she's like, wait, the plot of when then. Christina Ricci dips out, right? She she runs off. Yeah, and then she <laughs> yeah. she runs through the hole that the boyfriend the yeah. <laughs> enlarged. The, the How did that get made. here to the hospital? That was from my oh. <laughs> everywhere I go. All right, so and then we 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 cut. I love this so goddamn much. We cut to the police station where Jimmy Smith is. They're they're swamped with all of these useless leads, and this one character, this unnamed character, we will never see again. Crawford. He's he's got a name. His name's Crawford. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay, yeah. So Crawford, who will be named despite the fact that we'll never see him again, he shows up and he's like, hey, man, can I put a dead plant near your desk so it can be miraculously healed later? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that'll be, that'll be, uh, nobody will see that coming. Sure, sure. And then the, and then the captain is literally like, don't worry about Crawford. He's a fucking pussy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me move that stupid <laughs> dead fucking plant. And he's like, what? I don't. It's fine there. Yeah, none of this matters. Why is this scene in here? <laughs> so stupid. Well, and, and the the other cop, the cop that warned him about jurisdiction earlier, comes up and he's like, hey, can I ask about your backstory? We really haven't dived into that. And he's like, oh, sure. Yeah, my backstory. Yeah, I was, I was going to yeah. be a priest. And then I decided to become a cop so I could fight Satan. Right. He's like, we're, we're all fighting the same evil. Or he said something weird like that. I wrote in my notes, he was tired of getting caught sexually assaulting people, so he became a cop. Right, oh, exactly, Jesus. exactly. And then we start to learn more about their type of police work, which, by the way, apparently in New York City, there are four policemen. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, there's the four They're cops. all men, by the way. Four yeah. male police officers and one FBI agent that all work on every case all the time. <laughs> and they start to, he's like, you remember that Santa Ria case we busted? And it's like, this is so racist. <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't Santa realize that's Rick? what they were saying. Oh my God. <laughs> There's this weird moment where he's like, oh uh, yeah, didn't those guys in your Santeria case get off? And he's like, yeah, the problem with satanic cults is there's too much reasonable doubt. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Say that. <laughs> satanic murder's real no matter what the courts say. This movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> 
Jimmy Smith says, well, I found this symbol. It's everywhere, literally like nine times they've already thrown it into this movie. So whoever did this has a background in classic occult mysticism. I'm like, we both wrote that, that exact quote because it's that bad. It's like I so heard it. Meaningless. I heard it 10 times louder than all the other words in the movie. <laughs> like, so what? Whoever did this has a background in classic occult mysticism. This movie was written by a 12 year old. Oh, Oh my God, who couldn't be bothered to look shit up. A 12 year old in a hurry. Yes. <laughs> I really wanted like a cut over to a satanic guy who's just got like four red squares on his arm. He's like, sorry, I'm in a postmodern cult mysticism. <laughs> <laughs> the squares so represent the absence of form. <laughs> <It's stupid. laughs> Yeah, so he explains this is a satanic symbol from the 16th century back when there was so much Satanism. So much. And he introduces the concept of Black Easter, which is, I guess, Devil's Night, but for Easter. Yeah, is this real? <laughs> or do they just make all this stuff up? They also use the word it's Luciferian. Totally is Luciferian real? I mean, that's a real word. But yeah, the Black Easter thing, I'm pretty sure that's just an invention. I thought they made it up like Pastafarian, like Lucif Luciferians. So those are people who follow Lucifer. Oh, they, yeah. In, in their usage, it may well have been bullshit. Okay. <laughs> I'm very confused. I don't think it gets underlined by spell check, but they may have been using it. Wrong. Yeah, there's three goth kids somewhere who are using that word, but they don't know. Yeah. They're not. They're yeah, fine. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. They're just mad at their dads. It's OK. Yeah, they just really want to wear devil horns in their driver's license pictures. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> and you know what? Hey, I support that. Yep. Me Hell too. yeah. <laughs> All right, so then we, we cut to Kim on the phone that night. She's calling the hospital. She's like, hey, can you give me the private information of one of our patients? Oh, you're right. You can. Okay, great. great. I, wrote, I wrote Kim Basinger now violating all the hippos. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kim Basinger violating hippos would have been an awesome movie. Anyway, so I much I better. I, that's on the dark web. I can get you that. Okay, good. And come on, don't send your emails. I know it's a HIPAA violation. <laughs> this, is, this is funnier. This. <laughs> oh, and then speaking of the dark web, this is where we get to look at a computer that looks so goddamn ancient, despite having been like, you know, the kind of computer I had when I was 25. Oh. Yeah, yeah. This was only 20 years ago, only. Yikes. But it feels so ancient. Everything in this movie feels so ancient, especially the CG. Oh, yeah. She <laughs> clicks the pay my kids preschool thing, and there's a loading bar. And I realized that, like, I have to explain to the young people in the audience that things on the internet used to take a non-zero amount of time to <laughs> yeah. happen. Well, I, I thought, like, okay, so this entire scene is her watching a load bar. This is realistic computering from the terrorism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the most so. realistic part of the whole movie. That yeah, is right. for damn sure. So, yeah, but so she falls asleep while the loading screen is, or uh, with the loading bar is, is, is going. And then she hears some sound. Now, this is a dream, but she hears some sound coming from... Cody's room and she goes inside to check it out and it is filled with CGI rats. Yeah, it's oh. like like the CGI in the film is at the level of AR in life now. Yes. Like right. it looks like she's where like she's playing Pokemon Go on her right. phone. <laughs> exactly. Like that's what's happening. And she just hit a jackpot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There are like nine TikTok filters better than this. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> But I get it. I also go into a terror-based fugue state when I pay my child care bills. So like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I sympathize with Kimmy B here. Kimmy B. Oh, God. So she realizes that she was asleep. Oh, she wakes up, I guess. She wakes up and is like, oh, good. It wasn't real. And then she goes into the kid's room and the exact same scene happens just without the rats. And she finds right. da -da -dun, a rosary. Rat scratches all over Oh, her. And, and rat Oh, fever. right. No, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I stepped <laughs> on your thing. Yeah, right. She finds a goddamn rosary under the bed that the fucking nanny stuck under there to Christianize her kid. Yeah. To be fair, that would scare me too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's such a thing. I feel like it's such a bad, again, such a bad trope. Like, we don't have to connect any dots. We'll just throw a bunch of pitchfork symbols and some rosaries and some rat bites, and it doesn't matter. Right. It'll all come out in the wash. Evil, Satan, angels. Rats. That's all this. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, God. That that exact exchange probably happened in some writer's room in the somewhere. Writer's room. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As this was... <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, we just had a scene that got dangerously close to something happening. So we're going to pause while you catch your breath, but we're going to be back in a minute with even more. Bless the child. 
and baking soda will do. But honestly, if you want to get blood out, good old fashioned spit, it's the best way to go. I mean, I said, how was your weekend? Well, that that's how my weekend was. You, did, you didn't let me tell the whole story. So, Hey, guys. Uh, what's with the jug? It smells awful. Oh, it's for our brand new sponsor this week, Prison Wine. The secret is to flush before you start. I learned that the hard way. Let me tell you. Oh, oh my God. This is horrifying. Eli, Eli, this week's sponsor isn't Prison Wine. It's the Prisoner Wine Company, which is named after the famous The Prisoner Red Blend. Yeah, it's a reference to the TV show. Prison break. No, the prisoner. It's fine. The prisoner wine company insists on doing things differently. Like 20 years ago when they decided to combine some of California's best and most unusual grape varieties to make a bold and complex blend, a.k.a. their namesake wine, the prisoner red blend. Ooh, so it's actually a fancy wine. I mean, it's smooth and rich, but it's approachable. Sure, yeah. They, they, they sent some for Heath to try, and he raved about it. And now the Prisoner Wine Company will ship all of their rule-bending blends like the Prisoner Red Blend, the Prisoner Chardonnay, and Thorn Merlot directly to your door. All right, guys, I'm sold. Where do I get some? Go to theprisonerwine.com slash awful for 20% off, plus free shipping included on your first purchase. Get it in time for the holidays. This is the best deal they have available. Get 20% off plus shipping included at theprisonerwine.com slash awful. That's theprisonerwine.com slash awful. Offer valid on first time orders only, only for U.S. residents of legal drinking age through 1231, 2021. Rebate requests from alcoholic beverage retailers, wholesalers, or anyone suspected of submitting fraudulent requests will not be honored or returned. Limit one offer per household name or address. For more information, contact customer service at theprisonerwinecompany.com. Other exclusions may apply. Please enjoy wines responsibly. All right. So uh, you guys want a sip of this bad boy anyways, huh? Definitely not. You sure? One of the ingredients is Kool-Aid. M- more no. See, for me, that's more yes. <sighs> Why do I keep coming here? Because we sold all your hats on eBay. Right. Minions, listen to me. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord Satan. Satan. Our plan for Black Easter is almost complete. We shall corrupt the coming saint and tear countless souls from God's embrace. Yes, Good. excellent. Good. Beelzebub. Yes, Lord Satan. You shall rip our enemies from their mortal coil. The girl who tells of our plans, the daughter's mother and her allies, use your demonic powers to end their lives brutally. Yes. And Lilith, the fallen daughter, tempter of Adam. Um, any chance you could nanny? Yes, I shall. Wait, what? Yeah, it's just we need someone to watch the kid. I figured maybe you could do it. Why would you assume I could do that? I'm a demon. I I, I don't know. I, how hard could it be? You know, get the kid some juice, put her in front of the TV. No big deal. It's- well, then why can't Beelzebub do it? Um, he's... I, he's I, I mean, he's... He's a dude? No, no, it's not that. Um, it's, it, well, it's that he's covered in flies all the time. This has nothing to do with gender. Okay. Yeah, everything has to be political these days. Like, relax, am I right? You need to stop hanging out with Dave Chappelle. You really do. He's a bad influence on you, see. Oh, oh, whatever. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the movie with Kim Basinger ever so slightly confronting her nanny about the unsolicited religious indoctrination. <laughs> mm. Hey, oh, yeah. are you switching my kid's religion without asking me? And she's like, yes, but I'll also switch yours if you want. Yes, <laughs> you're right. She was like, yes, but she asked me to. It's her fault, <laughs> not mine. Right. No, your daughter wanted to be my religion, though. Yeah. Yeah. She really considered all her options, Maria. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. No, I'm sure you presented the other religions to her, too. Yeah. And there's actually a follow up scene to this. They're walking by Maria's church and she wants to go. And she's like, oh, okay. if you want to go to Maria's church and I wrote my notes, I'd be like, fuck no. You know what? Now you have to watch daddy make Maria cry by asking her a few simple questions about what she believes. (laughs) Now we're going to do this. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) And we also have that obligatory horror movie holy shit is religious iconography terrifying moment when they go into the church right she's like starts to pray and she's like 
boy, every single painting around us is something that you wouldn't want a kid to see, right? Like, that would be nightmare fucking material. Yeah. It's like somehow this religious movie, which is really not a, re- or maybe, I don't know, it's a horror movie, is more religious than the religious movies you guys make me watch. Right. Yeah. Kim sits down and she goes, I'm going to pray just like Maria does. And I really wanted her to start doing a racist impersonation of Maria. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, look at me, Kira. Look at me, Cody. <laughs> I just convert people to them, my religion without asking. Huh? Is it like that, Cody? You do it like that? <laughs> <laughs> But while Kim is praying, Cody gets up and leaves and mom freaks out for a second because she's missing. But she finds her in the creepy candle vigil room yeah, Mm -hmm. where she's going to use her pyrokinesis to light a bunch of tea light candles. (laughs) It's kind of cool. I dig it. And then the music starts. It's the fucking hallelujah chorus. The Virgin Mary statue starts crying. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Is this the part two where Cody like looks up and she's crying unconsolably? And I'm like, what's sad? Yeah, she yeah, she says she's sad, she's crying for us, I think in reference to the Virgin Mary. Why? I don't understand this. It doesn't make sense. They might as well have just put a big Satan pitchfork on the wall and some red lights and go dun. Yep. Right, yeah, uh-huh. right. What? What? Honestly, that would be more in keeping with this film. And Kim Basinger has a very like she's really underreacts to the whole pyro. She's like, hey, kid, sometimes, you know, as you as you grow up and become a woman more and more often, you will light candles with pyrokinesis. It's all part of growing up. (laughs) She is a psychiatric nurse. So clearly she knows that autistic kids can light candles with their minds and bring pigeons back to the dead. She went over that when she was diagnosing with the doctor. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Come on. Also, by the way, just a little moment that I loved. So the way that they did this effect was that they lit all these candles and then just blew them out and played the footage in reverse, which means that these candles keep lighting with a giant amount of wax already melted. In them. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, OK, so they head home and damn it, if Rufus Sewell and Jenna, the drug mom who left the hole at the beginning, I'll forgive you if you forgot about her, <laughs> aren't there waiting? Yeah. And they want Cody back. They want the kid that she abandoned back now. Six years ago. Yeah. yeah. Kramer versus Satan. and they have this weird way of playing it it's like hi cody i'm your mom i'm all better now our honeymoon was in barbados anyways (laughs) you live with me now i just love that they slid in the honeymoon (laughs) for no reason i know you got a slideshow you're gonna show to this person before you steal their child away yes (laughs) and she literally said jenna says something crazy like I'm better now. No bad habits except for spending Eric's money. Like, what? Yeah. What is happening? Mwah, 2000s relationships. Uh, <laughs> and she keeps trying to kiss the daughter and the daughter's like, ugh. And then she literally hands her, she's opening presents. Like this whole scene, she's opening like creepy dolls. Yes. And she hands her another present and the kid goes, no more presents. No more presents. <laughs> like that wouldn't happen. <laughs> well, Come I don't on. know if you just open that terrifying looking <laughs> fucking doll, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe you're right. Like, look, I have a gargoyle right outside my fucking window, and this is scary, lady. Just picturing the guy out in the van with the puppy. Oh, really? We're not giving her the puppy. No, that's fine. It's my puppy. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> so, I also like, too, like, so Kim starts drilling down. She's like, hey, so when you met my sister, was she in your drug rehabilitation program? He's like, yep. He's like, so you started a sexual relationship with somebody that you were in a position of power over. He's like, yep, hers. Yes, that was what I did. Yeah. He's like, you'll see more of it later. Sit tight. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. He's like, it's the 2000s. This is fine now, apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, this is where Jenna realizes that Cody is still autistic. Yes. She was hoping she would outgrow the autism that she recognized when she was nine years old. Nine days old, yeah. Nine yeah, days exactly. old, yeah. Yep. Oh, did you try bleach? I hear a little bit of bleach really just just gets rid of that. Or we could put a light, a light on the inside of her, maybe. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, organic <laughs> diet. And 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 Rufus is like, you know, he's like the husband cult leader guy. He's like, hey, look, we appreciate you raising the kid this far. We are totally not going to sacrifice her to Satan, but I am going to take her. Otherwise, like, you know, we're 45 minutes in. This movie needs a goddamn plot, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is also where we meet Dania, the evil nanny. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Who will pay off in the best possible way, by the way. Oh, she's... <laughs> yeah. yeah, she will. <laughs> yeah. This is also where Rufus, the cult leader guy, he's like, look, 
I don't want to be harsh, but you have to decide right now whether I can have your daughter. And I was like, no, I decided. I don't want to... What what hard sales tactic was he hoped this was going to work with? Ooh, well, if I have to decide right now, then yeah, I guess you can have the daughter. Yeah, he's literally like, you don't have the luxury of time. Like, what? What? Why? Yes, why Dwight not- Trout, give me the car. Give me the baby. <laughs> Five, four. And then how did she magic get... How was she magic kidnapped? Because I didn't see anyone go into her room. Well, right. Yeah, apparently, well, Rufus Sewell has given her the whole you don't have the luxury of time speech. He's like angling himself away from the kid's door Uh, so Danya, the evil librarian lady, can steal the kid. Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would have worked on me, too, because I clearly did not see that happen. (laughs) Well, I I don't know. I'm guessing it's entirely possible that she used the same trick he used to get bullets out of a gun later. (laughs) Oh, yeah. His powers are, I'm going to say, inconsistent. All the god powers in this movie, very inconsistent. (laughs) Yeah, no, true. Do you guys notice, too, that Kim Basinger is, like, really bad at movie running? Oh, she's bad at everything like right after right after the kid gets kidnapped she like runs into the street to try to stop oh yeah and it's like she's trying to tell like left foot right foot left hand right hand left foot right foot she can't do it it's so weird i mean we watched an entire trilogy where gary Busey ran so it's a little hard for us to be hard on kimmy b but i get it no that's true yeah, I, I love too when she realizes the kid's missing. She stares at the gargoyle across the window. She's like, "You had something to do with it. I know that you did, right? You did. I do that." Yeah. Ba, right. ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Greg the gargoyle will be back next fall yes. for a very special Greg the gargoyle Christmas. How very two thousand one of you. I love right. <laughs> so okay, so Kim goes to the police station to report the girl kidnapped, and of course the cop. At the desk and every single movie has no job other than to tell people to calm down and not take their problems seriously, right? Yeah, he's literally, <laughs> his eyes are like rolling back into his head yep. while he's talking to her. Oh, another lady with her kidnapped fucking kid. Can you believe this shit? <laughs> uh, right before donut break a clock every day like clockwork. I know I sound like Gary the Gargoyle. We grew up together. <laughs> He literally says something like, it's not even a kidnapping. It's a custody dispute. It's like, that's still a kidnapping, you asshole. Yeah, you oh, stupid like- fucking shit. No, no, no. They Jesus. know the baby they stole. This is not our st- word. This is not our world. Don't worry. Well, and I love to, because the only reason that we always have to have this cop that doesn't take it seriously is so that we can contrast that with our male lead when he comes in and does take it seriously. So Jimmy Smith comes in and he's like, oh, you know what? It's going to be that Rufus Sewell guy. He's pretty satan up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, come back here. I want to talk to you. And this is the whole conversation. Stark's pretty well protected politically. (gasps) Are you saying you're scared of him? Wait, are those the serial murders on that big board? You better get a lawyer. Like, did they write this using a random text generator? What was that <laughs> <Yeah>. scene? <laughs> what was that scene? It's like pages were stuck together and <laughs> yes. no one realized it. Yeah. He's like, come back here. I know you like to violate hippos. So come back here and you can look at all <laughs> my crime scene photos. Yeah. Random woman. Like there are so many laws being broken. <laughs> and then buddy cop. To Jimmy Smith comes over and he's like, I get it. You're looking for that lady's kid because you want to fuck her. And Jimmy Smith is like, what? And he's like, I'm a police officer, you stupid why, asshole. Why else would you try and find a lady's lost kid? I don't understand. <laughs> you're, fuck you're so right. Have you never fucked a lady whose kid you found? They are. Oh, it's so great. It's a great night. Yeah. Let me tell you. Jesus. Look, I'll give you the list right now. One, single moms. <laughs> two, ladies whose kids you just found. Three, chicks on Halloween. That's the root. One, two, three, right there. I'm telling you, it's great. <laughs> yeah, and this is where we find out that Jimmy Smith's the only person in the bureau, I guess because there's only four of them, mm-hmm, put together yeah. the most meaningful clue. The kid has the same birthday as all the murdered kids. Yeah, all the kids have the same, all the murdered kids have the same birthday, and that's the same birthday that Cody had. And I was like, I mean, up until they sort of explained an exposition, which I've already forgotten the explanation, I was literally like, why does that matter? Right? Yeah, and they do a very bad job of making it matter eventually. (laughs) Right? Like, what is this? And then, okay, so, so then Kim 
uh, heads over to the headquarters of Rufus Sewell's cult. Because, you know, when you have a cult, you've got to have like a something forward facing for new customers. <laughs> yeah. And it's in my old community college, I feel like. <laughs> That's where the headquarters <laughs> is cult. Right. Well, it's an atheist cult, by the way. The pamphlet says, there is no God but you. And I'm like, yeah, you know how cults are always trying to use non-religion to control people? <laughs> well, I love I love that whenever there's a Christian movie cult, it's either Catholicism backwards. Right. Literally. <laughs> or Scientology. Yeah. They went with Scientology here. But, yeah. but it's also Catholicism backwards. Because yeah. don't you remember earlier when Christina Ricci was talking about the cult? And she was like, it's like religious, but backwards. She literally <laughs> said that. Yeah. yeah, she did. It's like religion in reverse. It's like they unrape children. It's weird. It's so... <laughs> And she says, well, uh, well, fucking Skippy shows up to give her a tour of the cult, right? Oh, yeah. And he's like, it only costs $400. Like, what? Is, who wrote this movie? <laughs> but I'm, so and, 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 and she's like, well, actually, you know, I'm here to talk to the head, to head guy. And he's like, well, that's that's like going into a five guys and asking to speak to one of the five guys. Like, it doesn't you can't. He's not here. But they have a computer lounge where you can send him an email a an mail, electronic mail mail yes. that goes directly to his mailbox electronically <laughs> you can also look at pornographic photographs that will load one quarter of an image at a time right so okay so she sends an email asking him to please get in touch then she heads back to her apartment in the pouring rain. She has an answering machine. Eli, will you want to explain that to the younger? God, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Phone calls used to live at your house for a little while. <laughs> like a shitty stepson. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but she has a message from on her answering machine from Christina Ricci because apparently that call the hospital and ask for people's personal information thing goes both ways. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. So she called and got Kim Basinger's number, calls her and says, hey, I know where your kid is. Meet me at this diner at midnight. Oh, yeah. And this is when she's like, Eric's self-help thing isn't really self-help. It's like a religion, but it's more like the opposite of religion. Yes. They, hunt, uh, yes. they hunt kids. Yeah. She says it's the opposite of religion. And I wrote in my notes, science. Yeah. <laughs> it's like very confusing. Well, this whole conversation is just batshit, right? Because she's like, yeah, so they started killing all these kids that were born on the same day. And like, they got eight, nine kids in. And I'm like, I should leave. This is, I don't even want to be associated with these guys anymore. (laughs) They have gotten carried away. After the ninth child, I was like, a little bit too much blood on my hands. (laughs) Look, everyone had that friend who had really good drugs. And we all had that moment that was way too late where we decided to stop being friends with that person. I get it, Christina Ricci. <laughs> okay. The ninth kid is the charm. All right. I'm going to find a new heroin guy. <laughs> and I don't understand at this point, all of the like, so all the lackeys, like the satanic opposite of religion cult lackeys look like every kind of like goth satanic movie trope ever. They're all kids with like black spiky hair and like bl- black eyeliner. And so they start f- following them and they're trying to murder them, like both of them. But I don't get this because they already have the child. Right. Yeah. What's happening right now? Why are they trying to kill these two women? So I guess they're trying to kill her for leaving their cult. Right. Christina Ricci. And then I guess they got to kill Kim because she knows too much now. But isn't that how you get the cops and all the other people involved to know about your cult? Anyway, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. So they see them through the windows, right? Like they're, they're getting to the diner and shit. And Christina Ricci turns to Kim and she's like, look, I got to summarize this exposition really quickly. Your kid is going to grow up to be a prophet. They're trying to turn her to Satan. She has magic powers. Got to go. And she runs off the Satanists follower. They chase her into the subway, the Delancey Street F stop, which to be fair to this movie is a fantastic place to murder someone. <laughs> It was actually filmed in Ontario in a ghost subway system that they designed to look like a New York City subway. But yes. Really? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, apparently for a while, Canada had just like this fake New York subway that they maintained for movies. So it's just like always just like the F stop, the Delancey station. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so exactly. Weird, like every movie. Okay. So they get into this big chase. Uh, the Satanists are chasing Christina Ricci and Kim is like 
Like she's got, she's wearing a bush and tiptoeing in behind <laughs> them, <laughs> right? At one point, she grabs like the call the cops phone, and I wrote in my notes: the least realistic part of this movie about Satanist demons is that phone isn't covered in cum and f- poop. <laughs> <laughs> More than a New Yorker would think to fucking use it. Like, okay, come on, like, like that's going to fucking work. Okay. <laughs> and this is where we get her first vision of demons. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, of demons, right? Because she had the rat vision before. Right. right. Yeah. Well, that was a dream, but now she's seeing No, but them. she had the real rat bites. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. It was, yeah. a, was it a dream? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the we realize here, she sees that the bad guys, they have demon bat hype men. They're, right? they're, no, they're, they're, mo- they're monkey bats. Yeah, they're, they're not- flying monkeys. They're, they're the monkey fucking bats. Wizard of Oz yeah. flying monkeys. And to be clear, they are not attacking Christina Ricci. They're just hanging out, being like, "Yeah, get her, fucking get her." <laughs> You're right. I haven't liked any of your movies since you were a kid. Get her. Oh, <laughs> teacher. So yeah, so we have this moment where like Kim gets knocked onto the tracks and then barely escapes a train. Yeah, that wouldn't have happened. She would have been dead. That would have been the end of the movie right there. Absolutely. All the dead. And so (laughs) here's what apparently... So she sees Christina Ricci after she gets back up off the tracks and barely avoids death. And she walks up to her. They got her uh, sitting in this chair with her eyes closed. And she's like, wait, are you okay? And then her head falls off. Oh, yeah, because she's been decapitated. She's been, so, but they set her head back up on her body. Just for that little spook. That's right. why they did. Just to spook her a little. Just for Kim Basinger's sake. Yes. Yeah. So in, in the 11 seconds that it took for her <laughs> yes. to get it, they sliced off her head, set her in the shoe shine chair, put her head on top, <laughs> cleaned up all the blood because your, your body yep, does no blood. have blood in it. And then they left and they were like, oh, this is going to spook Kim B so bad. I'm going to give her a heck of a good spook. But then they must have come back because later they're like, there was no body. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. They put the head back on her and like, okay, now we have to walk her out. <laughs> now, I'm thinking about it. We should have just stabbed her in the heart, guys. That would have been so much easier. There's weekend just weekend burning burn Yes, exactly. <laughs> but her head keeps falling. <laughs> She's real drunk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> If it wasn't attached to her shoulders, am I right? <laughs> it's the early 2000s. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So then we get, so she's in the hospital now from getting beat up and thrown on the train tracks and shit. Which, by the way, no IV, no nothing, no tubes, no, no nothing. Just a, just just a comical piece of gauze taped to her oh, head. Yes. The yes. single, I mean... Kara, you've worked in hospitals. You get a single piece of gauze. That's how it usually works. Yeah, yeah all of yeah, the it's... patients at the hospital where I work, they just sit in these fluffy beds with no IVs with gauze taped to their Yes, beds. exactly. So it's, <laughs> it's like with a fucking Elvira hairdo of gauze. Yeah. Yes, yes. It was like she took it out of a Halloween costume. Back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, but Jimmy Smith is coming to visit her, right? Because he's like, I don't know if you've realized I'm the male lead. I know we've only met once, but I'm going to come and visit you in the hospital now. And she's like, oh, right. No, male lead. Yeah, I've, no, I've heard of you. Yeah. And to be clear, he's like, well, I hear you have a head injury. And she's like, Satanist cut off my friend's head, even though you didn't see any evidence of that. And he's like, mm, okay. I think the best thing to do right here is give you a gun and leave. Yes, that's exactly what happened. He says, well, you are clearly either uh, an insane person who is having hallucinations of of demons and and, and illusions of persecution or you're in danger. So I guess I give you a gun either way. Right. So if one way or the other, it'll be fine if I arm you. (laughs) Yep. Yep. And then he's like, after I arm this person who's having a psychotic episode with a gun, I'm going to go back to the station and, and do some like real biblical policing. Yes, right. Yeah. I'll stare in my Bible for clues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm wondering, what does this say about organized religion as a whole? That this is the plot of like 75% of horror movies. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're all about demonic possession. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so he's at the office policing hard, looking at the clues, and he's like, I'm going to have to ask God for a little help on this one. So he prays, but just as he's praying, a janitor shows up and interrupts his Ooh, conversation. Magical black janitor. Yeah, magical yeah. black. Yeah. Yeah, he's like there to make Jimmy Smith feel better. I don't know. At, at first, he's like, mm, all this murder must be hard on you. And he's like, yep, it's pretty hard on you. But 
you know, I'm going to get through it. And then Magical Jesus janitor is like, well, you're never alone with Jesus on your side. Pretty much the whole conversation, right? Right. And he's like, yeah, sh- I sure am. And then <gasps> the flowers have miraculously come back to life. Nobody could have possibly seen that coming. What? Yeah. What a useful thing for the God of the universe to do in this <laughs> child murder case. <laughs> Five child murders in, no less. <laughs> <laughs> I've already dead kids and he's like, oh fuck, I gotta resurrect some flowers or something. Yeah, we're literally you know what? seeing the flowers come back to life with a blurry backdrop of mangled children photos yes. on the wall. Yes. <laughs> like what? Uh, so Kim now so she's under guard. Kim is under guard at the hospital because, you know, she's talking crazy about demons and murders and shit. But she sees that the cop is distracted, flirting with a nurse. So she wanders off and heads to this address that Christina Ricci gave her. Mm-hmm. And also, by the way, she gets to this address. It's in Queens. She finds convenient street parking, least realistic part of this movie since the phone. <laughs> yeah. Bullshit. Oh, and then second least, there's a creepy kid with a weird eyeball that we referenced earlier. Yes. I have him down as baby Ronald McDonald. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, he is. He's baby Ronald McDonald, but with like a white milky eye. <laughs> Yes, and and he's hitting cans with a stick. Yep, and she's like, "Hey, kid, keep an eye on my car, will you?" For no reason, don't understand this at all. At first, I thought she handed him her keys, and I was like, "That's a terrible idea." But I realized she handed him money, and he literally throws it on the ground. Like, I don't like money. Well, I think it was like he's like, "Keep an eye, come on, lady." I just come Uh, on. Are you uh, really thinking that's what that was? That was like no, it mm. wasn't. (laughs) I thought this movie made a weird choice in being like, "Oh, a disabled child, like a kid in a wheelchair," because she literally like leaps back from him. (laughs) Right? She's like, "He disgusts me." (laughs) Yeah, I wanted a kid in a wheelchair to roll up, and he's like, "Hey, Billy," and she's just like, "Oh God, they're all over me," and he's like, "Oh, okay." Okay, so you're a grown-up. It's a, stra- it's a strange scene. <laughs> so yeah, so she goes to walk up to this building and she can see demons flying in the little alley that leads to it or whatever. There's a little goat man kind of yeah. hiding. Okay, by- thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Noah. Because here are the demons, right? There's two of the flying monkeys who land very yep. menacingly. There's a snake thing that curls around. And then there's very clearly a goat demon with social anxiety being like, <laughs> I feel like I'm not scary like the rest of the guys are. <laughs> This is, uh. <laughs> and Eli, you know this because you rewatched this scene like 17 so times. So many times. I really, I did, I did a deep study. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> Where's his movie? But demons be damned. She just goes up to the door and she's like, hey, can I come into your demon house? Jenna, Jenna, are you there? And she is. She is. It turns out that's Jenna's place. That's where they are with Cody, with the kidnapped kid. And it's nice. Yeah, and there's no real security at all. It's No, it's super nice. It's like a fabulous oh, yeah. New York apartment behind these scary demon doors. Yeah, you know, Eric's one of those guys who gentrifies too early, builds up <laughs> the whole building, then yeah. he tries to rent it out as an Airbnb for a few years. He's losing money the whole time. You know how right. it is. It's true. He's got plenty. He's got plenty. It's fine. Yeah, so she's like, hey, I'm taking the kid. And Jenna's like, oh, you can't take the kid. And she's like, why not? She's like, oh, because Rufus Sewell is going to make a well-timed entrance right now. Here he is. He has is, he is come into the scene now. Hello. Today, <laughs> I'm here. And she's like, oh, you know what? I said, funny story. I was going to take your kid with me to the store that I was going to go to. Bye. And he's like, no, <laughs> no, I don't. This is also the, like, attempt to poison her with the drink scene, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, because he, he's like, Stuart and Ke- Kevin Spacey, Jeremy Renner comes up. And he's like, Maggie would like a drink. And she's like, no, thank you. And I was really sad because I wanted a scene where like child kidnappers trying to make a Bahama mama downstairs. <laughs> I do not know what is in this. You make me buy a puppy. You make me buy several dolls from the store. <laughs> Kidnap, sacrifice child to the devil. Now I am bartender. This is too much. This is too much. <laughs> this is, people are moving my cheese. Have you read book? It's so, good. It's good book. Dated, but good. <laughs> So, so yeah, so she's like, look, I'm going to take the kid. And he's like, no, you're no, you're not. You're just like in my house now and I'm the bad guy. And she's like, OK, look, I know 70 percent of the plot at this point. I will keep quiet if you if you give me the kid. Now, I only point that out because part of the plot that she knows is that they beheaded Christina Ricci. She is offering to keep quiet about a murder. Yeah, yeah. of course. 
All right. Well, okay. Then. <laughs> I, 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 this is how I test the waters, guys, actually. Before. I'm sure <laughs> we could come to an arrangement. You give me this child and I won't tell everyone that you murdered Christina Ricci, huh? She's yeah. dispensable. Come on. You made that clear at the beginning of the film. She's got black hair. <laughs> well, and he's like, no, I'm not going to take that deal. And she pulls out the gun and I'm like, okay, this is a weird escalation on your part, actually. Yeah. Right. Because the daughter is still right there watching all of this. Like, you're going to murder this guy in front of the child? It's just trauma? Well, that's where Eric's like, are you going to murder me in front of your daughter? And she's like, ooh, good thinking. Cody, close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> she totally does. <laughs> And then, and then she pulls the trigger, but he has used his magical bullet stealing from the gun powers. Oh, I really want to be at that satanic dark seance, right? Where the fucking fallen agent Lucifer rolls out of the fucking floor that they've drawn in a child's blood. And he's like, could you give me powers where like, if someone puts a gun at me, I could just like real slow drop the bullets, <laughs> you know, like real, real cool and slow. And Satan's like, God, you got to stop calling me about this little shit, man. Like, <laughs> make a list and send an email to my assistant. <laughs> So, wait, and then we get okay so then spacey runner knocks her out with chloroform and we get one of the most spectacular tell me how we got here moments in the history of film oh it, i what this is how, so good how, okay so she wakes up <laughs> she wakes up driving a car yes. on the wrong side of the freeway on a bridge on a bridge. On yes. a bridge, no less. And, yes. And somehow, the whole time she's unconscious, she's in the middle of her lane. Yet when she wakes up, <laughs> right. she starts swerving all over yeah. the place and fucking drives off a bridge. Can, yeah, what? How? Well, they put her in the very first Tesla, is what happened. There's a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then so, and, and, and. The brakes don't work in the car. They've they've cut the brake lines or something. So somehow they've managed to, while she was unconscious, put her in a car going the wrong way down a very busy fucking freeway in New York mm -hmm. City on a bridge. And they're like, hey, we want her to wake up on the bridge. Did you time that chloroform just right? Yeah, we timed the chloroform <laughs> yeah. just right. So apparently, like at, at some point, they like they had to leap out of this car going because it, it doesn't have brakes. <laughs> right, they've got it up on blocks. One, two, three. They drop it, and it's in the middle of the fucking highway leading to the George Washington Bridge. The entire time, Russian Kevin Spacey is just like, "Okay, I finished making Bahama Mama. Then you make me do weird Rube Goldberg. I could shoot her. I'll shoot her in the head right now. She'll be dead. She's just." She'll be dead. People will know she died of the death. It will be fine. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, so she crashes. Her car's halfway off the bridge. Is it going to fall? Is it slowly going to tip over? I'm like, is this movie ever going to find anything that I haven't seen 37 times to show me? Yeah, and the movie does it so wrong. So they're trying to do, like, helpful person pulls her out of the car at the last second. Except they, I think they just forgot to hire an actor because this guy just sort of ever so casually wanders over and he's like, hey, you should um get out of the car. <laughs> I don't think you're in a very safe place at all. You right be there. There. And so she just... gently steps out of the car and he's like, there you go. And the car explodes. <laughs> but he's weirdly superhuman, right? He's like weirdly, yes. he's like on his tippy toes dangling over the bridge as he pulls her out of the car. And he's bracing himself on the car that's tipping over. He's using <laughs> the tipping over car as his anchor. <laughs> Trying to push her. Yes. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, let me help you. <laughs> I was one of your patients. You just injected me with something and called me a paranoid skits. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, OK, so here's here's how Hollywood this moment is the car. She gets out the last second. The car falls off the bridge and then halfway down to the water. It explodes from no all reason. the air. It's a, it being touched <laughs> Because, it, because it's a car yeah. and it's a movie. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it should say. Honestly, if the words because it's a car and it's a movie had just appeared <laughs> over the side of the bridge. That should be the title of this movie. Well, I, I love, too, that they put like before they put her in the car that was going 45 miles an hour the wrong way with cut brake lines on a busy highway on a bridge. Before they did that, they put alcohol, an open bottle of alcohol and some drugs just scattered around in the floorboard and shit. Why? 
Right, this car exploded on its way into a river. <laughs> what right. the They're fuck good is that going to do? <laughs> fish cop, fish cop, merman cop is like blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> one of those classic drunken blah, 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 explosion car, midair car explosions. <laughs> and then we get what we get this amazing moment where she calls Jimmy Smith and she's like, "Hey, I'm still alive. I don't want you to do anything. Don't tell anyone that I called you." It's like, why did you, what, why did you call him then? <laughs> Does it make sense? All right. So then we get my favorite scene in the whole fucking movie. Oh, it is? Oh, absolutely. Oh, this yeah. is the does Jesus give you candy scene. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, right, exactly. Right, exactly. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So he, so Rufus Sewell pulls up at his limo in this alley in, in Brooklyn somewhere or whatever. And he's got Cody with him middle of the night. And he's given the you have special magic powers speech, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which starts with, hey, you remember way back at the beginning of the movie when the lady was talking about the star? That was the day you were born. Huh? Yeah. There's a point pointed at you. Even though we know it wasn't because the lady is talking about the star and then she comes home to find you being nine days. Old. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I also love he says, Cody, do you love God? We're going to fix that. And I really wanted it to pan up. She's just, he's just taking her to a God awful movies live show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> An intelligence squared debate. <laughs> yeah. So they, they walk into the alley. He's holding the gas can. They come across this, this homeless guy muttering to himself. And he's like, wow, must suck to be mentally ill. I guess he'd be better off burning to death under his own power. Huh? Well, self immolation. You didn't think we could get more problematic about the mentally ill than your character, did you, Cody? Well, buckle the fuck up. (laughs) So Rufus comes up. He sets down the gas can and some matches, and he does some, like, fucking Harry Potter spells at them. Yeah, Yeah, he does. Flash cut to Rudy Giuliani taking notes in his mayor's office. Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) All right. I gotta also, get some you just gotta these... give them gas and matches, huh? <laughs> All right, they'll take care of it themselves. I don't have to kill a bunch of guys on Christmas. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> so yeah, so he says his magic Satan words. He draws his magic Satan symbol in the ground, and the guy's like, "Yeah, no, you're right. Now that you, may, I hadn't thought about it like that, but yeah, let me douse myself in gasoline and then light myself on fire." I also, just to this actor's credit, like they gave him a can, and it's obviously full of like cold, unpleasant water, so he. He should do it over his head, but he's like, oh, it got me right in the shirt. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not an over five. I'm not making enough money to dump gas over my head. (laughs) Yeah, so he's all covered in gasoline. He lights the match, but then Cody goes and blows the match out. And then she gives the man doused in gasoline a great big hug. Yeah, that's how she heals people. Okay, this is super important. She goes, he hasn't forgotten you. Okay. Okay, she says that. Then they walk away and Eric murders him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Oh my God. He does. He just lights the Very match. much has forgotten you. Yes, and Rufus Sewell looks up at God and he's like, ah, damn it, you had her blow out the match. That was good. I didn't see that coming. And then, yeah, lights the Zippo and then throws it at the guy <laughs> and catches him on fire. Which, according to the girl's own thesis, God was like, yeah, that's a good ending. That's good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's very internally consistent, this one. Yeah, and he does the whole, like, he lights the guy on fire and then walks away in slow motion, all badass. And oh, yeah. and like, it, as like a black shadow, which is yeah, flames exactly. behind him. Yeah. So, Satan. All right, well, I'll tell you what, that pile of cliches is probably the closest thing this movie has to a high point. So we're going to pause there, but first let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Can Kim Basinger act in time? Was her last name a trial run for the whole gift gif debate? Will the master of temptation ever find a more convincing argument than, come on, worship Satan, call, find out the answers to these questions and more. We return for the, the credits are rolling, so it must be over conclusion of Bless the Child. Hey, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm No Illusions. And I'm Emmy Award winner, Cara Santa Maria. Guys, you don't have to write that every time I introduce myself in an ad. Of course we do. It makes us seem legit. Yeah. Does it? Because in the last ad, Eli made poop wine. Anyway, as many of you know, I am an ethical vegan. No animal products, no leather, no nothing. That's right. But did you know that sex toys can be ethical too? You mean like what kind of stuff you're into? Because I'm more of like No, I don't want to know. Nope, nope. Shh. 
That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about AdamandEve.com. They're an LGBTQ-friendly sex and sex work positive adult toy superstore for all your sex toy needs. Plus, they were the first mail order contraception business in the country. Wow, that seems like a company I'd want to support. For sure, but they're not just ethical. They're also awesome. When you use our code AWFUL at checkout, you get almost any one item 50% off plus 10 tantalizing free gifts. Plus free shipping. That's right. Once again, that's AWFUL. A-W-F-U-L. Offer code AWFUL at checkout at adamandeve.com. adamandeve.com, the number one adult toy superstore. I pretend I'm a cat boy sometimes. Gross. Hey, don't kink shame. No, no, not cat boys. Eli. Eli's. Oh, oh, yeah. No, okay. That's fair. That is fair. Oh, uh, cancer, cancer, AIDS, cancer. Jeez, these people are so boring. Uh, excuse me, Mr. God? Oh, hey there, angels. What's up? Right. It's about the little girl prophet saint, um, Cody? Oh, right. The one that I gave spinning powers to. How's she doing? Did she save a bunch of souls yet? Uh, not, not exactly, sir. There's a Satanist cult that's kidnapped her. And it's trying to turn her to Satan in, like, a Black Easter thing? Right. Right. Rough. So so we're wondering if we could help her, or, like, the cops, or really anyone. Oh, well, those ways don't sound very mysterious now, do they? Yeah, no, you say that a lot, but, like, Satan has now sent several demons, and he gave a guy bullet-stealing powers, so... Bullet-stealing powers, exactly! Oh, 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 okay, fine. I can give you, um, let's say one magical black janitor who says good job and a lady holding a subway door open. Seriously? Oh, come on. Uh, mysterious ways, guys. My hands are tied here. <sighs> if we worked for the other guy, at least we'd get to meet Dave Chappelle. I'm sorry, what was that? Nothing. It'd be cool. And we're back for yet more of this shit. We're going to rejoin our hero going to church to see if maybe God can do anything about the Satan magic. Because you know how atheists are when things get bad enough. They go to church and be Christian. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that whole foxhole thing. And the nun lady comes over and she's like, ooh, sorry, I was, I was yelling at your boss. But he's really beefing it these days. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance you could talk to him? Yeah, fucking sister Mary, no plate spinning. She's like, oh, yeah, don't worry. I know the whole info dump. Here we go. Yeah, it's weird. And this is so fucking stupid. This is how poorly written this movie is. They have the nun take her to a another character who knows all about the plot. We haven't insulted all disabled people yet. So we have a random <laughs> person in a wheelchair we'd like to introduce you to in the next scene. <laughs> He'll be doing the next exposition dump. But he's got paintings. He's got paintings. He's going to do it. As Dr. Strangelove. Yeah, yes, that's right. going to be what happens in this scene. More or less. Yeah, so it, before we can get to him, we have a, a brief moment where Cody catches Rufus Sewell shooting mommy up with some heroin. Oh, right. Uh, that's very important. Dark. Keeping keeping her all drugged up. Rough. Mm -hmm. And then the nun takes uh, Kim to see this disabled guy. Father Grissom is the character's name. He was the priest that was too hot for the Vatican. They couldn't handle his truth. <laughs> oh, and he is he is auditioning for his Netflix special here. He's like, fucking SJWs and their rejection of evil. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He literally says, nowadays, the concept of evil is politically incorrect. Yes. Lol. <laughs> Libs owned. Yes. The devil's greatest achievement was that line from the usual suspect. <laughs> that he gets wrong. He's like, uh, the devil's greatest achievement was that the God isn't. No, wait, he's, he's no, there, he's but not. God is not. Uh, yeah. And that's also this weird thing that comes up in all of these fucking devil magic movies. If you're fucking around and you realize that devil magic is real, don't you instantly become a Christian? I would. I'd be like, oh, devil magic's real. That means his buddy's probably real. All right. Hoobity spoobity. I'm a Christian now. Yes. This is like the, the biggest fallacy. Like, I remember when I first came out to my dad as like not religious, as an atheist. And he was like, mm, she worships Satan. And I'm yeah. like, no, you don't. You're missing the nope, point. That's I don't believe in that guy either. Yeah. They go hand in hand. <laughs> well, I also, I don't want to uh, gloss over this either. So she goes in and she's like, yeah, so I've been seeing demons and shit. And he's like, yeah, those are totally legitimate. Your visions are actually happening. Demonic attacks are very common. They've happened all throughout history. 
He has never met this woman and knows nothing at all about her. <laughs> this is just a stranger coming in and saying, yeah, I'm seeing demon. He's like, yeah, probably Satan attacking you. And there's your problem right there. <laughs> Another person walks in. Hi, I'm here for the open house. Yeah, demon attacks. I can tell. I can always tell. <laughs> and she goes, well, so what do I do? He's like, you, no matter what, you have to get that kid back. And she's like, well, that's the, that's the thing I've spent the whole movie trying to do. And he's like, oh, well, I guess I just, I'm just here to insult people with limited mobility. I reckon. Yeah. I don't well, know it's... what I'm doing here then. I, I had a lot of paintings that I lip, lit up at apropos moments in my story, but other yes. than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, <laughs> that. Where does he live? He lives like in the Vatican basement? What right, is this yeah. place? In a slideshow <laughs> about the problem of atheism. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I really want him to click on a thing and it's just like, you know, John Malkovich not learning his lines on time. He's like, shit, sorry, that's for a different slideshow. I'm doing a different <laughs> thing later. So and and then she's like, he's like, OK, well, I guess I'm fucking useless. How about I have a sidekick that just apparently stands next to me in case I he's ever needed for any side kicking. Oh, right. He materialized. <laughs> yes. He was not in that scene. No. I am in the movie now. I was the one turning all the lights on. At yeah, the right, right. right. Exactly. He turns on the last light and it's just a dude. And he's like, okay, sorry. That's, I should have warned you that he's been here the whole time. Pop scare. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so apparently Rufus Sewell is upset because he was not able to turn Cody to the powers of the dark side with the, come on, light that guy on fire trick. So now he's going to take her to the roof and say, okay, either jump off the roof or love Satan. Right. Oh, yeah. He does the weird thing where it's supposed to be like the witch trial thing. Like either you float and that means you're you're a devil or you sink and that means you're not a devil. But either way, you're dead. Right. Like right that's yeah. sort of his trick with her. But it doesn't make sense because the whole point is he wants her alive. Yeah. So he's like, if you jump and you live you like Satan? I don't get this part at all. It doesn't make sense. Right. So she says, well, if God loves you, then he would catch you if you jumped off the building. So if you love God, jump off the building. If you don't, then I know that you really love Satan. And I'm like, dude, you can't trick her into this, though, right? Like, <laughs> if, if you say, you know, uh, fucking Satan lover says what or whatever, that doesn't count <laughs> as, a, as a conversion. Would you say that you don't not 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 love <laughs> Satan, Cody? <laughs> <laughs> and then they, we have this dramatic moment and I'm just like where is the drama and the way what what are we supposed to be we're supposed to be sitting here going is she gonna jump I know it's so stupid he's and he basically almost pushes her off yeah and then has I don't get this part where he's like a twinkle in his eye where he's like shit I'm sorry I'm human and I didn't mean to do that. Like he has a moment of regret, which is in not in keeping of his character because he's well, satanic. It's because she zinged him so hard. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, yeah, real believers jump off buildings. And she's like, after you. And he's like, oh, you zinged me so hard. I might throw you off this building. But then he's like, no, no, oh, I need to sacrifice you to Satan. Later. That was that was a good roast, Cody. That was a good <laughs> roast. You got me good. It hurts a lot. <laughs> It's a lot. All right. So now it's the next morning. Jimmy Smith is checking on that burned to death homeless guy. Uh, there's got to be a cop there going like, wait, FBI occult guy. This has nothing to do with occultism. This is just some guy burned to death. He's like, guys, there's a very obvious satanic symbol right there. OK, but also there's only four of us in the city. You're going to see me. Right. Around. <laughs> like, this is how this works. Guys, we spent three decades creating a panic anytime there was a star <laughs> near anything. Yeah. Right. There's literally Satan symbols right here on the ground next to the body. Oh, God. and they and he says to the other cop, he says, and I quote, it's a druid rune spell straight out of the 16th century. OK, mm. so let me let me just see if I can catalog how many ways I can tell you that that's wrong. First of all, there were no druids in the fucking 16th century. <laughs> they were gone by the 11th. Secondly, druids didn't use runes. That's entirely different type of pagans. Uh, thirdly, it's not a spell. It's a symbol. Uh, <laughs> 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 I think I got at least four. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If we can find a flaw in straight out of, it's the whole sentence. Yeah. Is like a, 
Oh yeah. Also, that symbol was never used for anything by anyone anywhere. So there's another. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's one incorrect thing every two words in that sentence. You know those satanic druids? They were anti-Christian. <laughs> they very much believed in the God of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. So then we have to cut over to him and the new sidekick, the new priest sidekick, following Rufus's limo to the dentist so they can kidnap Cody there. Oh, and I want to throw out here, I was like, if there's a satanic dentist, I'm going to be fucking psyched. And this movie delivers. It is a satanic dentist. She oh, walks is he in. a satanic dentist? Yeah. yeah. She walks in and they have the There Is No God pamphlets from oh, the right. cult. But for kids. But yeah, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, she looks in the she looks oh, I love this so much. Okay, first of all, we we skipped the that it's Easter Eve, which is a thing. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, Easter Eve, which I don't know. Which what that means, is. means that it's Saturday. So she's going on a right. Saturday dentist visit. And then she's looking up on the list. You know, you go to the doctor's office, but there's like a million doctors, so you have to look on the list to find the right doctor. And he's on the list under pedodontist that's what a kid's dentist is called a, pe- a pedodontist are you serious no. that oh, can't be real good. that can't Literally, be real really she's shouldn't. at the pedodontist and it's not <laughs> it's not a kid's dentist office at all it's definitely an adult dentist office it's just generic watercolor art yeah, yeah. there's no toys or cartoons anywhere right it's weird this whole scene is weird Yeah, but that's all it takes to find her, apparently. She walks in there and she's the dentist is like, basically, she just like snatches the kid out from under his instruments and she's like, I'll be I'll be right back with this one. Bye. Yeah, that did happen, actually. Yeah. And while she's gone, (laughs) uh, Nanny Lady comes and remember the guy who appeared in the last scene? Well, here's why he appeared so that Nanny Lady could stab him in both eyes with knitting needles. (laughs) Yeah, Uh. that's. I kind of like that scene. I loved that so goddamn <laughs> much. Like this movie really needed to wake me the fuck up, and yeah. it did. <laughs> and it did. It definitely did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we we have the dentist chase. She escapes to the subway. She gets on the train at the last possible second, and and evil nanny demon lady is right behind them, but she doesn't get there in time. And she turns into a literal demon when she misses them, by the way, like out of anger. I, I yeah. do that sometimes when I'm like, because if it's especially if it's late at night, you know, it's going to be 20 goddamn minutes for the next train. <laughs> I, I really wanted her to like turn around to the people around her and be like, sorry, sorry, I have diabetes. <laughs> and so, um... <laughs> well, so, OK, what I love is she she turns into a Medusa looking demon as she's chasing it. She hits the window and the window breaks and then the train just keeps going. I'm like. You went full demon form for just to break a fucking window? What oh, yeah. was the point of that? Ah, ah, ah fuck. <laughs> God damn it. And again, nobody seems concerned by this. Well, look, hey, I lived in New York City for long enough. If a lady turned into a demon and cracked a window in front of me, I'd just be like, I swear to God, if you make the A train late, lady, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. <laughs> Turn into a demon on the fucking BDFM line, okay? okay. <laughs> and then, okay. So then we get the cops. They're showing up. They've got a warrant for that house in Queens that she visited earlier. But Rufus Sewell apparently knew they were coming in. So he's abandoned it. He's he's cleared the house out. Yeah. Okay. But they haven't cleared it out enough because Master Detective Jimmy Smith finds traces of blood in the drain in the basement. Okay. They haven't. Okay. We'll get to it when we get to it. (laughs) this This is the silliest, funniest part of the movie. Oh, I love it to death. Yeah. Okay. So, so now, so Kim, I guess she's got Cody and she's driving to a safe house that the nun told her about in Vermont, right? Yeah. Okay. Driving her kids to a bunch of Catholics. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> we also see throughout this drive, because we see a couple shots of the drive and she's always being followed by Satan thugs that are conveniently planted everywhere. Okay. This is the <laughs> laziest the writing everywhere. ever fucking gets, right? Because they just stop at some gas station to use the bathroom and we see some like satanic dude going, uh-huh, that's the one they're looking for and grabbing a pay phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really wanted a, like a flash cut to all the satanists hanging out at all the gas stations she didn't stop at. <laughs> I've been here for like three and a half days. Can I come back and do some more bad satan stuff? <laughs> so- yeah. Oh, and then, but on her way into this gas station, Cody hugs the cancer out of some cancer lady. 
Yeah, what is the point of this scene? We never see her be cured, though. She just hugs a lady. True that. Yeah, probably right after f- fucking asshole lit her on fire and just walked off. <laughs> yeah, <into> right. <laughs> if Eric was in the background lighting that lady on fire, this is my favorite movie. I think that is what happened, Eli. In my mind, that's what happened. Well, he does show up right after that, right? Because the, <gasps> the, apparently it takes them as long to use the bathroom as it takes him to get from wherever he was to that gas station. Vermont. Yeah, yeah. from New York Vermont. to Vermont. To get from New York well, it's City just, to Vermont. It's just south of Albany. Thank you. They say it IBS suffers are everywhere, Noah. We are legion. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I love, too, that he, so he has to haul ass to get to that gas station quick to get the girl. So they take the limo. <laughs> We got we get this great bit where there's a limo chase and I'm just like I feel like you just make a bunch of tight turns right <laughs> honestly literally just stand next to a tree and it's just like oh god she's got us <laughs> oh man but yeah so but there's a cop ahead of her right so it's, uh, she gets ahead of the cop runs him off the road you know to get his attention because there's literally no other way to get a cop's attention. Mm-hmm. He runs over to her side window. We do that to you. Now you don't do that to us. Yeah. Are you crazy? If you were a black guy, oh. yeah. And that's the that's the weird thing about the scene, right? Is that it's like she keeps getting vindicated, but there's no reason for it. Like the cop pulls her over, and he's like yelling at her, and she's like, "No, there's Satan is after me," and he's like, "That's insane. You're an insane." Oh, per- and then Satan runs him over. Right. Exactly. Well, and then, yeah, so they catch Kim, they get the girl, and the entire last 15 minutes of the movie were undone. Right. Hey, guys, none of it mattered. Hooray. (laughs) None of it mattered anyway, though. Well, that's true. That's true. (laughs) So, okay, so meanwhile, Jimmy's back at the house in Brooklyn, just forensicking his ass off, right? Okay. So I have to explain to the younger listeners, I don't know if this is still a trope in a movie, but there was a glorious period from, I'm going to say 1992 to 2003, when every crime movie was like, you know, if you shine black lights at stuff, you could see it. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. So this is the big reveal, and it could not be sillier or more cartoonish. The blood is like, oh no, I am being stabbed. And then someone has <laughs> like taken the blood and drawn it into the left leaning fork symbol. Yes, the stupid goddamn cre- they they hid everything in the house. They they got they washed away everything so that nobody could find anything. But hey, 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 in case they think of using the black light thing, let's do the symbol. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I really wanted like a grocery list next to it. Buy milk. Sorry, it's just <laughs> I have the blood now and I don't want to forget. <laughs> well, it's one of those things where if I don't write it now, I'm gonna be fucking fucked. I love to can basically or calls him. She's like, Jimmy Smiths, they have Cody. And he's like, I was not ever aware that they unhad her. Remember that I you haven't contacted me since you got her. How much of the movie have I been in, would you say? (laughs) Because I counted 87 lines and I don't I don't I don't see that. She's like, I'm in a in a diner just south of Albany. He's like, Yeah, no, I know the one. (laughs) Yeah. No, absolutely. I'll be right there. I saw some goth kids hanging out there. Yeah, earlier. right. Oh, no, I'll, I'll head over there. Be careful. Don't let them use the payphone. So, yeah, but he's going to take a helicopter now. He's like, look, we're getting really close to the finale here. I, If I'm going to get in a helicopter in this movie, now is my last chance, really. Yeah. Wait, there was a helicopter? I must have gotten up and gotten some cereal or something. Yeah, he helicoptered into the diner. Yeah. But literally, if you look at my notes, they just say things at this point. Like, do you think nuns hear well under their habits? <laughs> their ears are always covered. <laughs> so I'm clearly not paying attention at all. Like all Santa Maria notes, they devolve from multiple lines to single lines. To... Yeah, yeah. The last ones are just the word Kara. Or just ug, <laughs> erg. Yeah. Sometimes she inserts images of her with her more famous friends. <laughs> Just pictures of my Emmys. Yeah. <laughs> with little tears drawn on them in Photoshop. So, yeah, but so he arrives at the... Di- I love the idea, too, of getting in a, co- uh, a chopper and going, take me to the diner south of Albany. <laughs> but they do. They manage to find it. So, okay. And he gets there to the diner to, to set up the big finale. Then we have to cut over to Rufus at his creepy Albany estate where the re 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 kidnappers arrive with Cody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he says, OK, last chance. You have to decide whether to worship Satan or die for Jesus. And she's like, really? You're not going to do a um, 
a, like a big dead guy or fall based thing here. Just we're just going to sit around a table and ask now, huh? But she's a kid. So he's like, OK, Cody, last chance. I'm going to count to three and then you need to commit yourself to Satan. One, <laughs> two, two and a half. Worship <laughs> Satan. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. And strung out mom is like, totally, you should totally go with the Satan bit. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> and I love that the nanny, who we now know is a literal demon, is a little put off by this. She's like, ah, oh, this feels awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love to. So the, the little girl uses her davening powers or whatever, starts rocking back and forth, and all the plates spin a little bit. And then when it's over, Rufus is like, that is a fucking useless ass superpower. And I'm going, thank you. <laughs> this is not just me. At least just, the movie. So, yeah. awesome. just so you know, if you uh, turn over to Satan, you get bullet stealing power. So, <laughs> you're looking to upgrade. I, I've got a, uh, got a good sell for you. Oh, there's okay. And then there's this, maybe the dumbest scene in the movie, right? Where we, we, we cut back to the nun that told her the plot earlier. And she's apparently waiting at the safe house in Vermont. She hasn't showed up yet. So she's like, all right, all the nuns come with me. And I wrote my notes that like, if this ends with the fucking nuns storming the compound Schwarzenegger style or something, I'm in, right? Oh, nun foo. Yeah. I was confused by this scene too, because I feel like it was a lot of nuns in one place. And I don't know why, because I'm not sure what nuns are necessary for, but it somehow seems unsafe. Like you'd want to spread them out like you do with your backup data. Like you don't want to put everything yeah. on the same drive. Like you need to di or like your investment. Don't put all your nuns in one basket. Yeah. Yeah. You want to diversify the nuns. Yeah. They form Voltron if you're not careful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> diversify the nuns. It's important. So yeah, but all the nuns gather together. Uh, if, if, fucking spoiler. It'll just be to pray a lot. Yep. Well, duh. And then. We have this fantastic moment. So they pull up outside the compound and the co there were cops and a helicopter and all this stuff. So they need a reason for the end of this movie to have tension. So he's like, where is everybody? And the other cops like, they're waiting till the end of the movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> but don't yeah. worry that you can go into the house through the spooky forest. Path <laughs> <that> only, <laughs> I know he might as well be taking the bullets out of Jimmy Smith's gun as he does it. <laughs> and you know what? Poke out one of your eyes. There we go. Yeah, That's so a little bit more it. tension. Now it's fair. And wait, here's a time bomb. It's only got 40 seconds on it. That's cool. <laughs> There's also this great moment where Jimmy Smith is like, now I want you to stay in the car, Kim Basinger. And she's like, why the fuck would you bring me here? Yeah. And the first, I could be at the diner. There's really, there's <laughs> literally no reason I'm not just at the diner. <laughs> it's because she's a better cop than he is. Okay, well, that's fair. <laughs> like, clearly, he's like, I need help with this one. That's the remake, though. When we remake this movie, just it keeps cutting back to Kimmy B, just like trying the pot roast. Like, you know, diner pot roast is always better than you think. <laughs> It's always better than you think. It's like diner steak is always worse. Diner power is always better. It's worth it. <laughs> yum, yum. Worth it. <laughs> All right. So now we get evil librarian getting Cody ready for her big sacrifice. So is this when she's in her dressing gown? Yes. Uh -huh. And the weird milky eyed kid is weirdly in her dressing chambers for some reason. Why do they always dress her so Dickensian? Right? It's weird. Well, it, the way they've dressed her is is so bizarre. We're going to get to another aspect of it in just a minute here. But first, we have to have this baffling sequence that screams something was cut from right here. Where <laughs> Kim Basinger, who the last time we saw her was with Jimmy Smith being asked to stay in the car, is now breaking into the house and taking a fucking knife from the <laughs> take a dagger, leave a dagger tray that they have. Yeah, you got, you, if you're a Satanist, you gotta have a take a dagger, leave a dagger. I guess, yeah. You never know when there's, you're gonna need a sacrifice. So, <laughs> but so she's sneaking through the house. Jimmy Smith is also sneaking that through the house. We have the moment where they run into each other and almost kill each other, but <laughs> it's fine. They're fine. But then she, okay, I want to break down what happens and then I want to talk about what must have been the plan. Yes. Okay. Please. She sees Cody run by in her quinceanera dress. It's like, oh, there's Cody. She goes off to do it. He's going to fight some hoodlums for dramatic timing, right? Right. She goes, Cody's boinking against the door to the Satan church. And then when she grabs her, it's one-eyed scary ginger kid. Right. Which means that along with the puppy buying kidnapper, they're like, hey, 
<laughs> One-Eyed Ginger Kid loved the work you did out front of the place the other day, by the way. And crumbled up that money. How would you feel about dressing up as a little girl and doing some rocking back and forth, do a little davening, and then you do like a look at me, one eye, huh? <laughs> right. Well, it's it's even dumber than that, right? We're, you're giving it too much credit. Keep in mind, Kim Basinger has not seen Cody in the quinceanera dress, right? right? She doesn't know that her daughter is in a little tiny fucking bridal gown of some sort. She just sees some. So the kid could have been wearing any clothes. Yeah, that's true. Redheaded kid running away. She'd probably been like, yeah, no, but they, <laughs> but apparently I'm thinking he talked him into, he's like, I should be wearing the same dress as her though. I feel like we're going to take it seriously. <laughs> like I saw that you guys got two in case she spilled spaghetti on it. <laughs> It'd be a shame if one of them just didn't get worn at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, Are you humming? On. I feel pretty. <laughs> <laughs> no. Satan stuff. <laughs> but they grab her and they bring her into the satanic church. And this is where Satan shows up. In the form oh, of... Oh, God. Rat Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, if you're... Movies, movies. If you're going to make Satan, try not to make him look like a monkey. <laughs> Just like a monkey <laughs> a with wings. Monkey. A horned monkey. Really wanted Satan to, like, stand up and apologize. Hey, I'm really sorry for these weirdos. Um, <laughs> I promise I'll take better care of your kid than the Catholic Church would. <laughs> I just, okay, so we see all these rats running and they all join together to form Satan and he just stands up and he goes, uh, so, sorry, CGI will be better later. <laughs> My apologies. Yeah. Does that mean that the rat, are the rats gone now? Were the rat, like, is that like a, a semester away? They come back home and they're like, you're never going to guess what happened to me. So I'm running around, I'm looking for cheese. <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm part of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like his a shoulder calf. for like half of the day. It was so oh. weird. <laughs> and of course, does he do anything? This is the worst part. Does he do anything? No. Just sits there in a chair. I could have been looking for cheese. <laughs> Where do I need to be here? Berries. I could have got some fucking cheese by now. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, okay. So meanwhile, the nuns are praying hard that, and this is the actual prayer. The nuns have all gathered together to pray real hard and they're praying that Kim Basinger will be Christian enough to make it through the final scene. They're like, we pray that she has enough faith in God to make it through the movie. Oh yeah. What? I wrote in my notes. Can you guys prematurely do this prayer next time? Like a prayer vaccine? Yeah. It'd be helpful. <laughs> so, yeah. Please. So, and yeah, there's, they're like, Please send some CGI angels, because if we can judge anything by these CGI demons, that's going to be fucking awesome. Sure is. And then we cut back to the child sacrifice, right? They're getting ready to sacrifice her. Kim is not a fan of this idea at all. And she still has that fucking kitchen knife from earlier that she picked up, right? Mm, from the take a knife, leave a knife exchange. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So meanwhile, Rufus is going, OK, like I, I, I've been on two and a half for a really long time. You need to say that you love Satan right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's still counting. It's like my toddler has all these adorable tricks he does now. And it's like when I'm trying to get him, I'm like, where's your head? And he's just like playing with a truck or something. And I'm like, I swear he does it. He does. He does point to his head. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's embarrassing. You're embarrassing me in front of Satan. Can you show him, please? <laughs> Can you point to the dumb truck in the hundred words book, please? Because I'm, I'm look, I look like an asshole right now. <laughs> so, so then he's like, he's like, all right, all right. I'll tell you what. If you don't love Satan this very minute, I'm going to shoot Kim Basinger, right? And again, I'm like, it doesn't count. Love Satan says what doesn't fucking count, dude. <laughs> but just then, the cops break in and start dropping gas canisters right in the middle of their child sacrifice. Yeah. I, I, you guys are really good at following every little detail. By this point in the movie, always by the big payoff, I'm half asleep. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I, I, my notes say that's a lot of nuns in one place. Then they say, Kim Basinger shot. All of a sudden, I'm past where you guys are. And then, and then I have some like, Mim? Is her name Mim? I don't know what her name is. Oh, good. Can this movie be over now? I just know on the next episode of Good Morning Santa Fe or whatever you're the host of, we're going to see this movie playing in the background. <laughs> But yeah, so, okay, so the evil librarian nanny demon, she's like, oh, the cops are here. Quick, shoot the little girl. And he's like, really? Now that the cops are here, you want me to kill? Okay, all right. So <laughs> I will. And and Kim Basinger stabs him and then gets between 
the kid in the gun and takes a bullet for for Cody and dies. Meme. Except does she die? Yeah. Now oh fucking Cody is rocking back and forth just like she did with the bird, and a glowy angel amoeba shows up right <laughs> above her. Yeah, Angels show up like the friend who comes at 8 p.m. on the moving day. Just like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> wow, pizza? You got all the boxes. <laughs> Ooh, I love pepperoni. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, so and then Rufus is like, oh, well, you know what? Fuck it. It's not going to work, but I'm going to just kill this little girl out of spite. Now, so she sends her like glowy angel amoebas at him and then they glow at him. And so he doesn't shoot her. He's like, oh, the angels are kind of in the way. It's just like, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you duck down, angels? So angels, like could a, you just duck down? In my little... periphery, it's really hard to get my <laughs> keep my attention. And then Jimmy Smith kicks down the door and just shoots him 22 times in the <laughs> face like he was a black guy with a phone or something. Yep. I want the whole movie to grind to a halt while he shoots him. Just like, blam, 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 blam. <laughs> Reloads. <laughs> blam, 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 blam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then we have to have this stupid moment because like apparently somewhere in their script by numbers thing or whatever it says well and then you have to have like somebody heroically rescue somebody at the end so the the church is on fire now and it's about to collapse and everyone has the sense to run out except for kim and cody so that jimmy smiths can run in and go come on let's run out and they're like yeah we didn't think of that Right. But they're like a little too close to the door. So he's like, I must. Oh, you're out. OK. I yep. was just I was worried you were not going <laughs> to smoke. But then they're like, what about strung out mom? Right. Let's let's go ahead and just we'll save her from her own mess, too. Right. So she and she's just standing there going, humana, humana. It's again, uh -huh. none of these people are like injured or nothing. It's like something hasn't fallen on them. There's not like a fire that they have to leap over or whatever. It's just that somebody has to like go and like unfreeze them in a game of tag or something. <laughs> to be fair, Kim Baster was shot. But well, she was, well, but she was so unshot by yeah, the little yeah, girl. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and again, they could have used that, right? She could have been limping or whatever, but she wasn't. She just runs on her own after he tags her. So, yeah. yeah. Jesus, it was so stupid. So, okay. And that's it, by the way. The, 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 that's we, the end we, of like, the movie. Yeah, the fucking... <laughs> Cody is safe and Rufus is foiled, so we just head back to New York City for the fucking Easter wrap up in the middle of October. <laughs> I, I love. There's this great moment where like everybody's just walking around like saying the Breakfast Club clothes out loud. Like Jimmy's like, so, so your, your sister's, sister's in rehab, huh? And Kim's yeah. like, yeah, and I adopted Cody. I'm Cody, and, and Cody's <laughs> like, and I'm not. Uh, I don't have autism anymore. But here's the best part. <laughs> This whole ending scene, there's a punky McPunkerson running at them. Oh, yeah, right? for no reason. Like like a fucking Monty Python intro, right? I thought he was going to say it's when he finally got right. to him. <laughs> but he, he runs. She turns around and he's like, uh, and then just she hits him with blue steel and he stops trying to stab her. I have no idea what this was supposed to be. Apparently, yeah, she just her angelic gaze stops him in his tracks. He drops his knife and runs off. Yeah nothing like the actors all seem to think that there was going to be some cgi that went with that scene or something right <laughs> there might as well be like a green tennis ball on a stick going like rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> and that's it that's all that there's no, no reason trying to pull a moral out of that story all i can say is kara thank you so much for hanging out with us again i don't know why you keep doing it ah <sighs> It's all for the sigh. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Bless the Child. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lay a trail of breadcrumbs for ourselves next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, if you loved the CGI of this week, <laughs> you're going to adore next week where we'll be watching Finding Jesus, a Finding Nemo ripoff the Internet found in a car wash dollar bin for us. <laughs> And so now we're going to take a gander. Oh, lucky us. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 323 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara for helping out. Be sure to check the show notes for a link to the Talk Nerdy podcast and perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our 
Building Shows, The Scaling Aid, The Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Credit available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the little offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Rice Lobby of the Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Neil, I positive. I'm no illusions. Promise to work harder on another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Cody grew up to become the star of TBN's highest grossing show ever. I'm sort of like a Jesus the Angelly Prophety type magician. Give me all your money. <laughs> Cody also went on to be executed publicly for the sins of mankind, is kind of the implication of the movie. Thanks. Christians think this movie is a biopic of Madison Cawthorn. <laughs> Four, four, five, five. five. Eli, did you forget four again? <laughs> <laughs> Once more from the top. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.